Good morning. Pastor Carlson's not here for the invocation. Uh, he's right out there with the people I think who are giving the invocation. Good morning. And welcome to Tampa City Council held this day, April 6th, 2023. Councilman Carlson, I believe you have invocation. Yes, he's walking in. Um, on September uh, 15, 2013, Aaron and his wife, Katie, took a major step of faith and planted Radiant Church in Tampa, Florida. Their dream of seeing Tampa Bay impacted by the kingdom of God is daily. Um, sorry, I ran up the stairs. <laughs> um, daily becoming a reality. Since its launch, Radiant Church has seen incredible growth and expansion, planting seven physical locations and an online campus. Aaron has a heart for... Uh, multiplication and plans to continue to open uh, locations throughout Tampa Bay. They firmly believe that the best is yet to come for Radiant Church in Tampa Bay. Um, Aaron, gradu Aaron graduated from Southeastern University, uh, received his master's in business administration in 2010, and completed his doctorate in ministry in 2020. Um, he and Katie have been married since 2010 and now have three beautiful children. If you all don't know, um, one of their campuses is right near where I used to live, um, Britton Plaza, and uh, you can't get a parking space in Britton Plaza anywhere on a Sunday because they have so many people going to this church. So congratulations to them. Um, also, I should say um, one of my good friends and friends to many of you, um, Peggy Lan, is having surgery today, so please include her in your prayers also, and uh, we'll stand for the invocation and then the pledge. Thank you. Thank you. It's an honor to be with y'all. We're always praying for y'all, and we will take a moment and pray on this Holy Week also. Father God, we come to you today, and we thank you for what you're doing in the Tampa area. We thank you for our councilmen and women and what they do for our communities. We pray, especially this week, for during a Holy Week, that we would keep our focus on, what, on you, on what this, mean, uh, this week means. We thank you for our Jewish brothers and sisters and Passover and what that means, and then Obviously, for us as Christians, what it means and what you did on the cross 2,000 years ago. I pray for wisdom um, over this meeting today. We pray for Peggy and the surgery that's happening. I pray that healing over her body. And we pray that your hand of divine favor would rest on our city, on our neighborhoods. Lord, you continue to keep us safe, um, protect us, and let us honor you. And thank you for what you're doing in our life. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Roll call. Carlson. Here. Vieira. Maniscalco. Here. Persat. Here. Dude. Here. Miranda. Here. And Citro. I am here. We have a physical call. Thank you very much. I will entertain a motion to accept the minutes from Second. March 9th, March 16th, and March 23rd, 2023. Motion has been made by Councilman Maniscalco, seconded by Councilman Goods. All in favor say aye. Aye. Is there any opposed? Motion passes. Let's go through the approval of the agenda and the addendum of the agenda. Councilman Maniscalco. I have a request. If we can uh, pull item number 84 uh, for discussion. It's with uh, a change order with uh, Nelson Construction. I had a couple of questions, and that is under uh, my committee. We can pull 84 for discussion. Second. And would you like that during our uh, staff report? Staff reports. Yes, Thank sir. you very much. We have a motion made by Councilman Maniscalco, seconded by Councilman Carlson. All in favor say aye. 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 Is there any opposed? Motion does pass. Ms. Travis, good morning. Good to see you guys today. Good morning. Nicole Travis, Administrator of Development and Economic Opportunity. Um, we have a walk-on request resolution for approving the Master Infrastructure and Riverwalk Agreement for Rome Yard. Um, we've briefed you all on this that it, to no fault of the applicant or the city staff, it was a glitch with um, the newspaper in the noticing of this. Um, in this assignment so we're asking you to set a hearing 
for this on April 13th so at 501 p.m. Second. <coughs> we have a motion made by Councilman Goods, seconded by Councilman Maniscalco. Mr. Shelby, did you want to add something? And uh, the clerk has a copy of the resolution. Okay, thank you very much. All in favor say aye. Aye. Is there any opposed? Thank motion you very passes. much. Thank you. Shall we go through the staff report uh, items now, Ms. Travis? That, would that be? I was wondering if the chief would be on, but he's it, it, not. No. Okay, thank you. Okay. Do you know he's not on? I'm, I'm sorry. Did, did chief's not on? No, he's off. He's in I'm sorry, you're looking for the chief of staff? He's not in today. Right. So I think, yeah, you just tell us who you, if any of them that you want to pull, and we'll make sure that staff is here this afternoon. We had a discussion yesterday. All I want to do is make sure that every maker of the motion either is, is, is happy with the memo or wants to actually have staff in, in, uh, in attendance. Perfect. Thank you. So in agenda item number 88, uh, who is the maker of that motion? No, that's resolution. Resolution, resolution, resolution. Uh, number 90, Councilman Carlson. Yes. Okay. Number 91 is Councilman Goose. Yes. For discussion. Thank you very much. Number 92. Yes. Was Councilman Goose. Thank you. Number 93 with Councilman Vieira. That is going to be continued to May 4th. Yeah. Uh, it's actually funny. I mean, I'll, let me take that off the agenda. There's no need for a continuance for that. I um, I know this is going to sound weird. I don't recall making this motion as as it's there so I have to go back and see so let's take it off and I'll um, take a look at it so a motion to remove from the agenda please second we have a motion made by Councilman Vieira seconded by Councilman uh, Maniscalco all in favor say aye. aye is there any opposed motion carries thank you Councilman Vieira 94 uh, yes please. okay and we've got uh, who's in the Councilman Carlson 95 okay 96 Councilman Carlson <coughs> Well, I, I sent around a memo. I think st staff wants to move all the pure discussions to October 25th. I mean, May 25th. Or May 25th. Um, I'd rather take them all off the agenda completely. But um, uh, um, anyway, I would move to uh, move this to May 25th unless Council Member Hertek objects. Okay, we have a, uh, a motion made by Councilman Carlson, seconded by Councilman uh, Vieira. All in favor say aye. Aye. Is there any opposed? Motion carries. We also have uh, Mr. Chairman, Council I'm sorry, forgive me. Getting back to number 96, uh, and I, I stated this in the memo, um, there are items that are set for the May 4th meeting relating to um, pure and wastewater reuse, and uh, the suggestion is to continue those items, move them from the 4th of May, and move them to be with this item on the workshop on May 25th. So moved. Second. Okay, then we have a motion made by Councilman Carlson to move this to the 25th. Seconded by Councilman Miranda. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Councilwoman Hertek, I see this may want to be continued. Yes, this ne this uh, needs to be continued until May 4th. So we're going to do that on the 25th also? No, the 4th. Okay. Continue to May 4th. Motion made by Councilwoman Hertek. Second. Seconded by Councilman Vieira. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. And then the last one, I believe, Councilman Good. So I see a win will be here if necessary. Do you still want to hear this? That's number 98. That's due to come. They asked if we could change on the 15th. That's fine. Second. Changing it to the 15th? Second. Okay. We have a motion made by Councilman Good, seconded by Councilman uh, <coughs> Maniscalco. All in favor say aye. 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 Is there any opposed? Motion <laughs> carries. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Um, did you want to address that? I, I just briefly, Morris Massey from the legal department, just wanted to make sure you, in reviewing your agenda, you also pulled item 64 for under the administrative update that uh, is in re relation to the settlement of the, the lawsuit yes. item. So that needs to be specifically discussed before it, uh, the settlement's approved. So moved. Second. A motion made by Councilwoman Hertak, seconded by Councilman Carlson. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Now, Mr. Mass. Mr. Massey, we're also going to have uh, Ms. Johns come in with a rezo. 
I believe that was, my that was what that she was said. Okay. That's, that's Agenda it. items number 12, 79, and 94 will also be pulled for administrative. Well, 12, 12 is on your agenda. I did, there's just a substitute ordinance um, that I submitted. So when that comes up, I'll discuss the substitute ordinance. Okay, 79 and 94? Uh, 79, 94. <coughs> Let's look at those real quick. Okay, that's been, con that's been continued to May 4th. Okay, right, right. we're good. Thank you okay, very much. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, with regard to a uh, uh, the um, memo of, from Nicole Travis relating to the um, rescheduling of n the item number 99, it was also mentioned that there are two related items relating uh, to, and I can uh, set forth CM 22-77483 oh, regarding um, naming, uh, naming. Mis Mr. Mr. Yes. Shelby, item 99. 97? 97, thank you. Thank you, number 97. That was continued to May, s that was continued to? May 4th. May 4th, no, that was continued to June or May 4th, I'm sorry. Councilwoman uh, Hurtak can continue May, to May 4th. May 4th. Oh, then. <clears throat> that's that's what, what the request was. Their request and two other items that is listed on the memo I, I believe I'm referring to not number 97, but number 98. No. What, the East Tampa Regional Facility? Okay, that, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll move that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that cleans up that item from a future Yes, I'll, I'll, I move it to make that, I, I move to move all of them to May 4th. <coughs> we have a motion by Councilwoman Hurtak, seconded by Councilman Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is there any opposed? Motion passes. Councilwoman sure. Hurtak. Uh, number 79, we're gonna have to pull because they have a, um, a substitute resolution. We don't have to pull no, it, but I, I actually still have a question about it, so I would <coughs> like it to be pulled. Sure. Councilman Goose, one second, please. Uh, I do apologize. That was 79, Councilman mm -hmm. Hurtak. We have a motion to pull agenda item number 79 by Councilman Hurtak, seconded by Councilman Carlson. All in favor say aye. Aye. Is there any opposition? Motion does pass. Councilman Goose. Yeah, I wrote it off on 79. Yeah, well, I pulled it. Okay, all right. Pull. Yeah. All right. Just is Ms. Johns going to be here for that one? Uh, I think that's who's handling it. I had a conversation with her yesterday about this item. Ms. Travis, you familiar with that? Yes, Attorney Johns will be here to, to discuss that. I know that she had a substitute resolution that was working. She heard your comments and has been working with them so that they could work towards the closing. Okay, all right. That's what yeah, okay, but she'll right. be here. All right. All right. Any other changes? Motion to approve the what? agenda. Councilman Carls. If I could real fast, back to um, item number 96. I, I, I forgot to mention, um, uh, no, I think the staff wanted to move some of these till after the election because the votes might change. Uh, it's unless somebody's not telling the truth, however the vote ends up in the election, there aren't enough votes to pass anything related to Pure. It's the number one issue of the campaign. Uh, the public doesn't want it. Uh, I've been asked by water experts to try to stop these conversations because they're hurting the future viability of water reuse in our region, which eventually we'll need. Uh, but the, there's incredible harm being caused now because the administration or water department are push, is pushing this so quickly now when we don't need it. Um, I, would, I would rather the administration and, and water department work with city council to help us stop this and change the legislation in Tallahassee. It is possible to change it. We ought to change it. We ought to have a longer term view toward this that is collaborative with the public instead of pushing it heavy against council and the public. Thank you. One last thing. Um, uh, the city council does have the right, regardless of when anybody says, city council does the right, have the right to control our own agenda and we can decide on May 25th to take all this off the agenda if we want. So um, uh, the public doesn't want us to waste time and money discussing this anymore. So I, I would just ask staff to work with us collaboratively instead of trying to push a new 
uh, iteration of this. Thank you. Mr. Shelby. Yes, thank you. One more item to clean up relative to number 98. Number 98, I believe, was continued to June 15th. That was uh, your request. Your, it was your motion originally, Councilman Goods. Correct. And it was continued to June 15th this morning. In um, a memo uh, from uh, Ms. Travis, there are two items that are similar that are set for April 20th, and the continuance request for those items are also for June 15th. So to clear up the calendar, it is CM 22-77483 regarding um, uh, naming for uh, uh, Shirley Reisler, and the other one is CM 22-78783 regarding uh, an honorary street naming in Ybor City for uh, Salvatore Martinez Ybor. So if those can be continued per the administration's request also to June 15th, 2023. So I think, moved. Goods. I think the gist of it is, is they're trying to re define how the naming rights will be done uh, in, 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 in accordance with everybody, uh, no matter the street, so forth and so on. I, and I'm hoping that the ordinance that we're looking at, uh, council will have some leeway in that uh, also with the mayor. So if it's the same original ordinance that Mr. Massey was bringing forth, all right, I'm, I'm fine with that. Is Marty, is there a question about the timing of it since we're, <clears throat> if we're voting on that and we're also voting on the ordinance to change the naming process, should we vote on that one first? Is it? I think they're independent. Morris Massey Legal Department, I believe that's the intent of, this, of the request. The ordinance is scheduled for your first reading consideration today, which would be brought back for second reading in May sometime, and then then real estate would go move forward with the renaming request based on the ordinance. The okay, so they work together. Yeah. All right, thank yeah, you. That's the idea. Thank you. So moved. Second. Well, we have a motion made by Councilman Hertak, seconded by Councilman Vieira. All in favor say aye. Aye. Is there any opposed? Motion does pass. Okay, any other changes? Motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. We have a motion to approve the agenda by Councilman Maniscalco, seconded by Councilman Miranda. All in favor say aye. Aye. Is there any opposed? Motion does pass. Let's move on to agenda item number uh, agenda item number one. File number B two zero two zero ten. We have a ten minute update from Florida Department of Transportation. Mr. B Day. Morning, Chair. Morning, Council. Vic B Day, Director, Mobility Department. Uh, this is the quarterly update from Florida Department of Transportation. Uh, today, Ira Cash with FDOT District 7, and I believe they're online. Uh, uh, we'll be presenting uh, a uh, project on Boy Scout Boulevard by North. I'd like to end it off to Stan and Ira. Uh, take it away. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. My name is Ada Cash. It's not ready. If we have the presentation up, I think it was submitted uh, earlier this week. Yes. to go right can you please enlarge it for us <clears throat> so you can see it we just need to make it larger yes please make it larger I think you just need to hit presentation mode. Okay. 
Okay. Can you Thank see you. the screen now? Yes, ma'am. Good morning. My name is Ada Cash, and I am the project manager for the intersection of Boy Scout Boulevard and Lewis Avenue intersection. And we are very proud to present this intersection improvement. The construction was completed exactly two weeks ago. This project improved the intersection capacity by adding an eastbound right turn lane from Boy Scout Boulevard to southbound of Lewis Avenue. And this is shown in the blue, with the blue shade. This is Boy Scout and Lewis Avenue. It also provides a bicycle keyhole lane, which I will show you in the, in the next slides. It replaced the existing sidewalk to meet current standard. And this intersection was selected as one of the early works projects for the West Shore intersection based on traffic volumes. It will direct, divert traffic during the construction of the West Shore interchange. Uh, this is the existing condition. We can see four through lanes, looking, and then a left turn lane and Lewis Avenue. This is showing the new improvement looking east on Boy Scout Boulevard. And this is showing the right turn lane here, the bicycle keyhole lane, it's a five feet bicycle keyhole lane for bicyclists to travel safe, safely through the intersection. And this is another view on the right side. This is another view. This is the new sidewalk meeting current standards. And this is our presentation for the project. Thank you very Do you much. Do you have any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Councilman Carlson. It, is that the end of the presentation? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Sure I, just, and sweet. I was just asked by constituents to pass on a couple things to Vic and F. Um, uh, number one is uh, it takes a long time to get from McDill Air Force Base um, up to the Selman or, or even up to Beta Bay. And so the public has asked, is, is it possible to time the, um, the lights? In some ways, it's a national security issue because we have high-powered, important people from McGill stuck in traffic there. Um, so that's one request. The second is that, and Vic knows this, we have asked, um, uh, we've asked Vic to work with uh, you all and the county and others to try to coordinate projects. Um, there's, there's multiple roads being blocked in the south of Gandhi area at the same time and people can't get to their houses and so anything you all can do to help better coordinate with um, I'm not blaming on any one entity but just the more that you all can all the groups can coordinate to try to time the shutdown of roads the better because people are very frustrated at being shut down from multiple angles but also for the length of time that shutdowns are happening so any help you can give would be greatly appreciated thank you Thank you very much. Sure. Well, we'll work with uh, our partners at FDOT uh, on both. I know that on Dale Mabry specifically, uh, we've reviewed the timing several times and uh, FDOT does have their uh, consultant review the timings as well. So we'll follow up on the same. As far as the project south of Gandhi are concerned, we are aware of the community's concerns and we continue to work to uh, to make sure that our right-of-way permits are uh, separated in time. Currently, it's a pretty broad time window because we don't have the appropriate digital tools to give them a much shorter window to get their job done. Uh, we are working on that, and that procurement will come up in front of council, which will address that specific issue of multiple uh, work zones on a single roadway within short distance. Thank you. Anybody else? No, thank you very much for the presentation. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. Thank you very much, FDOT. Thank you.
All right, that uh, concludes the presentation. We'll now go to public comment. If you're here to speak on any item on the agenda, uh, please come up to the lectern. You'll have three minutes and please state your name. If anybody wishes to speak for public comment. Yes, sir, go Good ahead. Good everyone. You know, when you see me, it's about, it's about veterans and their families. I know I'm Elizabeth Williams. I'm the CEO and President for Veterans Council and Veterans. Uh, our location is 3810 West Kennedy Boulevard. We, we co-located with the American Beach Post 5. I come to you today because I couldn't do it last week because of the, the April start on the first, on a Saturday. April is considered Sexual Assault and Awareness uh, Month. And that's what I'm here to, to, do, to make sure that the council know that and we're aware about this, that we're going. Sexual assault is definitely in the military. It continues to increase in the military. In fact, now it's increased 16% on active duty, which we have in Air Force just down the, down, the, down the street, but also in the academies. And then with us here down with the, um, here, so not only do we deal with the active duty, but the, but the after effects. So if you're a veteran and you, now you're dealing with somebody who has suffered from military sexual trauma, and as I mentioned before, uh, uh, last year, women veterans has twice the rate of, of uh, suicide than non-women veterans, and the reason why is military sexual assault. So I wanted to make sure that I brought that up to your attention, that you know, to be aware for sexual assault awareness month. I'm not sure if we're doing anything. I can tell you for veterans council and veterans, and how to send information to uh, Councilman Luis uh, Vieira. Uh, every starting Monday, we're going to be doing a, a, a streaming on, uh, to address military sexual trauma for the whole month of uh, April. And then if follow-up, that's the awareness, and it's also the, the doing part. Follow-up, Veterans Council Veterans is going to have a military, our second annual military sexual trauma conference on the 9th and 10th of June. Finally, I just want to uh, mention why this is very important for us as a, as a county and as a, and a, and as a city. Uh, Florida has the second largest woman veteran population. The resources doesn't match it. And you can only sit there and, and assume that if, if the army has an army, the military has a problem with sexual assault, then the city's going to have one as well. And that we need to be, we need to be aware of it, and maybe in the future think, uh, find some way to help contribute, to take some of the pain and suffering from the families who are, who are suffering from the military sexual assault. That's all. I just wanted to bring that up. Thank you very much. And thank I'll you send. Very much. Yes, sir, Councilman Beer. Yes, thank sir. you very much. And I just wanted to thank Ellsworth for coming up. You're always such a great guy, and I, I always appreciate you. I know yesterday the uh, county commission honored you, and I was there. Uh, just for all your amazing work. So, I mean, I'm, if, if you want to, you know, call me after this, and I'm glad to uh, set something up, it, it, go in on, uh, if you may, maybe want to do like a, um, uh, uh, you know, something live on Facebook or whatever on this topic, and we've met before on this important topic. But thank you. I mean, w w for, for those of you all who don't know, I mean, Ellsworth takes up the cause of not just veterans, but all veterans, I, I've seen you take up the cause of, you know, a, a lot of uh, African-American veterans who were ignored during Jim Crow. You take up the cause of, of women who were assaulted and, and continue to be assaulted military. You take up the cause of LGBT veterans. Anybody that serves, Anybody you got serves. back. And, and, I, and I really appreciate that. You're a great guy. So God bless you. So we'll, let's connect after this, my friend. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank sir. You much. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Please state your name, and you have three minutes. Okay, good morning. My name is uh, Chilson, George Chilson. I've been in my residence from 1981, and we have a lot of complaints. Uh, the house at 3201, a lot of activity going on, drug activity, pocket car, all the way in a halfway on the street. What is the street? 3201? 3201. A lot of complaints were made against that house. What is the street address? 48th Street and 23rd Avenue. Okay. Okay, 23rd Avenue is a stop sign. Solid vibes. 3201, they had a lot of activity, a lot of cars coming over to that house. They're blocking the, uh, the stop sign. I have been called uh, the security <laughs> parking. They come out. They said the activity was going on in the car. They asked them many times to move the car. Okay, they do car wash. They wash car on 48th Street. They don't have no license. They, were, they had got a citation for the city call about that, but they're still doing it. And people like me paying a property tax every year, we should not have to live like that. We want to better the a condition of the neighborhood, but people like that, they ain't gonna let that be. Also, the landlord lived next door to them, and he see all of that going on. He told me, if you wanna uh, come down off 
uh, 23rd Avenue and the car there go the other way. I said, that's not right. So I wish y'all said reach out and try to help this neighborhood. I had went through the mobility. I talked to Miss Bethel. Also, I tried to get no parking sign. They say they can't get, give no, no parking sign. Also, I asked for a three-way stop sign. Car passes, six and seventy miles. And we're not giving no weight in the neighborhood. I want the neighborhood upgrade. Also, I called the mayor office, and I talked to a lady named Miss Ann, and she said she going to see what she could do. But I, I say, y'all, please, please help this neighborhood. 48th Street and 23rd Avenue. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Councilman Goods. Uh, CT, can you come out and give, you, you have, oh, okay, I can see a Kelly. Okay, if you get her all of the information, we can get that over to DeFelice. Code enforcement. I know what she's talking about, and she's she's absolutely correct. You know, uh, she's absolutely correct. So we need to get some people over there to kind of clean that up because that's been on for years, and I know they've gone through a little bit, but maybe we need to be a little bit more aggressive in in that area right there because she's totally correct. Thank you, Chairman. Next, please. I just came. That, that's my lunch. She just came up. Uh, well, like they say, you only got three minutes, but it's just deep because. We, you know, people don't understand that. See, like, I, I appreciate the work that y'all do. It's a lot of generational gaps, so it's kind of hard to fill them in. You know, this young generation doing their own thing. You know, I'm in my 50s, are we doing it? She's older, so they're stressing her out. You know, she's been there since 81, <laughs> and it's no respect for the elderly. That's why the country is the way it is, but I'm not going to get into that. i make that short, though. But, uh... I appreciate the work that y'all are doing. If y'all could give her somewhere where she can kind of get some immediate help, because I a lot of the older people that used to could do things like Harvard, my mother used to know them. Big, a lot of people gone or dead or you know or whatever or retired. So that's why they just speak on her behalf because she got high blood pressure. They watch cars. They disrespect from you know music and stuff like that. You know, like with me. It, a lot of stuff don't bother me because I was once young, but with her, I just speak on her behalf. She wants something done like that. So, you know, that's all I just came to speak on her behalf on 48th Street and 23rd. Yeah, you know, it's just, just a, and they rent, you know, so when you rent, they can pretty much tear up when they leave. It's just like that, but she's a homeowner. So that's all I have to say. Thank you for your time. Before you leave, sir, can, for the record, can you give us your name? Oh, Yumiko Roberts. Thank you, sir. Okay, I appreciate your time. Thank you. My name is Taylor Cook. I'm a member of Tampa Bay Community Action Committee. I live in District uh, 5, recently changed. Um, and I'm here to speak in favor of independent counsel, per usual. I know today is the second reading. Um, same thing I always say. It's really important that we have more transparency with the police. Um, we recently had a case, which we've talked about before, of police brutality where someone came to our group and asked for us to help uh, get accountability for them and the CRB has actually been giving us a hard time uh, trying to get accountability for that person and I think it's kind of disgusting that you know we're trying to use the CRB for its like purposes and it's kind of like a back and forth between the city and the CRB and the police who don't want us to investigate the case um, so I just think there's a really big need for any transparency, any accountability that we can get. Um, I also wanted to raise awareness around the now Tampa Five. There were four protesters arrested on March 6th at USF. Um, and I do think this is a city matter because if you watch the videos, which are all online, um, and I was there as well, the brutality is horrible uh, or was horrible. I have nightmares. It's been a month, and I'm still having nightmares about that day. Um, it was quite atrocious, but now it's Tampa 5 because the school is trying to retroactively um, charge one of the people that was there, and um, it's just disgusting, and I think the city needs to know about it, and the city needs to do something about it and show that USF <laughs> can't just brutalize students or protesters like that because it's our right to free speech. Um, thank you. 
Thank you. Next, please. Hi, my name is Philip Freund, and I'm here today to speak in favor of granting the CRB independent counsel. And because I believe the TPD has had a long history of misconduct within the community, and the CRB is the board responsible for reviewing that misconduct. So I think granting that board more power in order to better review the misconduct of the police would help uh, bolster safety throughout the city and help the community feel more safe. And like Taylor before me mentioned, we have been working within the CRB trying to help somebody who has been assaulted by TPD and it's been difficult. And part of that is due to the issues we've had with the city lawyer. Thank you. Thank you. On a completely unrelated note, uh, Jason Marlow here to talk about agenda item number 84. I uh, just want to complain never-endingly about the never-ending story, the production that is going on on my street. And speaking on behalf of myself and a lot of other Seminole Heights residents, uh, it bothers me that Nelson Construction is, you know, there's a contemplation of giving them $102 million more million when they haven't done a great job with the money that we've given them, if I'm not mistaken. Is that the change order to number 84? I'm getting quick side of looks. All right, just want to make sure I'm right. 105,000, not 102. Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, thank you. Let's remove some zeros from that. That's fantastic. Yeah, a little bit less. But suffice to say, listen, this is a company that has not been extremely considerate. Uh, they moved my mailbox to the point where now my mail person has to, like, hop out of her truck in order to put the mail in. And there's just a consistent lack of consideration for the neighbors. I mean, we have folks on my street who are older, and it is difficult for them to get in and out of their car and get into their house right now. So I just asked, make sure that we're holding these folks accountable to the deadlines they project. First, I was told my street would be paved into March, then it's April 5th, now it's April 10th, soon it'll be the 17th, next it'll be 2024. So just want to make sure we're holding the companies that we're giving big public money to accountable. Thank you all for your time. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. My name is David Simonoff. I am a volunteer with the ACLU, and I've been a Tampano for... I can't do the math, but close to 30 years. Um, my colleague James Shaw was here at the last meeting explaining why the ACLU thinks it's, it's important that the CRB have independent counsel. I'm just going to, you know, uh, going into depth again, I'll just give you three bullet points. Number one is that uh, this is a common sense uh, request. Uh, not only does it reduce the risk of bias from uh, a legal advisor, but it also risks, sorry, reduces the appearance of bias. Number two is that people in Tampa want this. An independent poll showed that nearly 70% uh, of the people surveyed were in favor of independent counsel for the CRB. Uh, that was a poll we commissioned, but that was done independently. And number three is that uh, this, is, this has been done at cities and counties throughout Florida for time, a long time now. And there have been no reports that it has affected the budget. There have been no reports that it affected uh, police ability to do their work or their morale. So once again, this is something that is common sense. This is something people want. And this is something that would not cause any problems. Thank you very much. Councilwoman Herta. Kelly, can you ask the folks outside to? Next, please. Thank you, Honorable Representative. I am a follower of Jesus Christ. Abortion has divided our society like few other topics in recent history. The Bible places the highest importance on human life. God treats us as a sacred and valuable, and that's because he created us in his own image. This is why the Bible identifies an unborn baby as being fully human. The Bible says, you made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you, thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your worksmanship is marvelous, how well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was being woven together in the dark of the womb. Some people don't believe abortion is wrong because they see it as a solution to a problem. How can we solve one moral problem by allowing another, especially murder? That's exactly what unrestrained abortion is. God created all life and he sustains it. He has given each of us the breath of life and it's our responsibility to protect what's given by the Father in heaven. This is why the question about whether abortion is right or wrong is so significant. 
No man or woman has the right to steal from God or destroy the creation of life that belongs solely to him. In God's great love, he gives life that bears his image. Determining if abortion is good or bad goes well beyond the question of whether people have the right to terminate the life of a child. The real issue is whether people will insist on living according to worldly standards that oppose God's. Please get rid of this modern day holocaust. Instead of killing these babies, let's help them. God bless you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. Um, hello, my name is Leith. I'm a member of Tampa Bay Community Action Committee. I live in town and country. And I'm here to speak in favor of independent counsel for the Citizens Review Board. Uh, it's the second hearing day. I'm going to repeat many of the points I've already said. You know, with the CRB being a review board for TPD, which is a department of the city, I think it's important for them to be able to be independent for them to carry out their work properly. You know, if it's the same attorney that's representing the city and all its departments, including TPD, then how are they going to be able to give that objective you know, response, that objective review of the misconduct. And, you know, we saw it in practice. We saw how the city's attorney was trying to say, oh, well, there's nothing you can do. There's no way you can bring up a case to the CRB in this way or that way and uh, trying to make it more difficult, which, you know, where the attorney's interests lie, you know, if they have, you know, a representing multiple departments. And, um, the history that TPD has shown us over and over again is more, just gives us more proof to the need for an independent review board to be able to review their cases. Um, especially given uh, that, you know, today, for example, um, on the agenda, we're going to be talking about the five uh, Ford F 150s going to TPD and, uh, you know, many other things that they really don't need. Uh, when we still have, you know, the fire department still asking for fire trucks, still asking for more, um, you know, uh, stations around the city for them to have, you know, adequate response times. And so I think uh, it was a fault in the budget initially that still we could, that still needs to be worked on in the next budget. We need more money for things that people actually need and not for the police. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, council members. My name is Elias Colon. I'm a minister of the gospel and the head of Abolish Now Ministry at 60th Street Baptist Church. I'm here today to remind you of what's taking place in our community, to be a voice for the voiceless, defend those who can't protect themselves, and to remind you that God calls you to establish an equal weight and measure, justice. So in our discussion on abortion, here's my response. I'm tired of seeing my black brothers and sisters being murdered in the womb. I'm tired of seeing my white brothers and sisters being murdered in the womb. I'm tired of seeing my Hispanic brothers and sisters being murdered in the womb. My question to you is, are you willing to take a stand against this modern Holocaust? Or are you going to take a paycheck just like Judas? And that, my friend, is called a coward. These human beings in the womb deserve equal rights like us. And why is that? Because they are created in the image of God, Amagi Dei. It is consistent with science that they are human from conception is irrefutable. Every science book you go to, human from conception. We will not stop fighting the name of the Lord as a church against this mass slaughter of children. So I urge you, as many others have before, to repent with us. Turn away from your wicked ways. Turn to Jesus Christ for salvation. Help these mothers and fathers, help them financially, health-wise. This is a promise from our King of Kings, Lord of Lords. He's never broken his promise. We have. That he will provide and that nothing is impossible with him who gives us strength. But if you and I continue in this path of unrighteousness, God will not hear our prayers. For there is blood in our hands. Proverbs 24, verse 11 says, to rescue those who are being taken away to death, 
hold back those who are stumbling to the slaughter. And God says he knows if you knew about it and didn't even do anything about it. Thank you guys for your time. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Noreen Coppola Miller, and I live at 1911 East Chelsea. I'm here this morning. Uh, I was looking on the agenda, and I was seeing a lot of activity going on in East Tampa, and uh, a lot of dollars are being moved around. And I do know that with Memorial Park Cemetery that that's being continued, but I felt um, that I needed to be here this morning to. Uh, talk about Memorial Park Cemetery. I am very grateful that the news media have brought it to the forefront. I've gotten hundreds of calls from community people that had no idea that it was going on, but thank God that the different channels, news media channels in this city has put on um, and found it newsworthy to talk about the injustice that's going on with Memorial Park Cemetery. And I was listening to the gentleman talking about the military and the veterans. There are 800 black veterans in that cemetery. That cemetery has a monument that honors the black military for their service to this country. And I'm hoping that we're going to do the right thing. As I was watching the news, I see that, that the negotiations are going on with the new owner. But something about they're going to do a property appraisal for the cemetery about the value. And I was like, wow, how? You know, and I'm sure you can do whatever you uh, need to do, but how do you do a property appraisal for a historical black cemetery to find out the value? And I, I, that was quite interesting when we know that the capacity has been full for a long time, and there's nowhere really for a developer or anyone else to build on. But to spend money to do an appraisal on a cemetery, that's interesting. I just hope that. This city, the city of Tampa, do what's right by that historical black cemetery. It's 104 years old. It's a lot of unmarked graves in there. It's a lot of graves that are marked. I have a number of my family members in there, and I can't say that enough. And right now, since this has been going on for the last two months, almost three months, it's draining mentally, physically, and emotionally for me, and I'm sure for many others. And a lot of the black community is outraged about what has happened to our historical cemetery on the corner of 22nd and MLK. I am a woman of my word, and I share it with you that I will be coming to city council meeting. In spite of the challenges I have, but guess what? I'm here. And I'm hoping that you all are going to do the right thing. I know you're going to do the right thing. I know it's going to be resolved. I know that we're going to be celebrating that the city of Tampa owns Memorial Park Cemetery, and that we are honoring those souls in that cemetery and, and respecting them, the sacred ground that it is on. So thank you so much for listening. Thank you for um, your support. And I'm waiting to hear the resolution. I know it's going to happen soon. Have a great day. Thank you. Good morning, Council. Robin Lockett. I'm here to speak about uh, item four, the CRB. Uh, as many have said uh, prior, you know, there's a need for it. The people came uh, to city council. They uh, <coughs> wanted it. Several of you have been consistent in voting yes on it, and others haven't. Um, you know, it's, it's important for um, council to have the will of the people. Even if you find, because now there's new quotes coming out, that now uh, the board has the authority to uh, do what the CRB uh, is asking to be done. So when you gain new talking points somewhere down the line and didn't bring that talking point up front to say, hey, this is, you know, y'all rave the attorneys, right? They would have brought it up to say, uh, instead of creating an ordinance for the second reading, they would have brought it up to say, no, you know what? We already have to duplicate the efforts that's already, that's already in place. Please do not, uh, this is an opportunity for those who haven't voted, and Miranda, I know where you stand on it, right? You're consistent. 
uh, for those who haven't voted on it, um, to vote yes, because this is, the, this is what the people want. It's, it's no harm, no foul. It's not taking anything away from anybody unless they use it. We, we waste, what I'm seeing is that we waste a lot of money with the city of Tampa. A lot of money is being wasted on frivolous things. So, but when the people come and ask for something, now it's a budget item. You can't afford it. It's going to cost money. But waste a whole lot of money on a lot of other stuff. So I ask that every council person support this. Flip back to the other side and support it and stand strong with it. Don't be pressured from others regarding your vote. That is the problem. You have to have the will of the people. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in chambers who would like to make public comment at this time? Mr. Randolph, are you on the line? Yes, thank you very much. Good morning. My Good name morning. is Michael Randolph, and I'm with the West Tampa CDC. Um, I want to say a good morning to the city of Tampa and to the city uh, council. Um, to hear, today I'm here to talk about the West Tampa Public Safety Initiative. And to give a shout out to Joe Robinson, who chairs the uh, West Tampa CAC Public Safety uh, Council, in which the West Tampa CDC works with in hand in hand. The West Tampa Initiative is a comprehensive approach to reducing violence in particular and crime in general. It was created to deter crime by creating economic options. It focused on reducing the number of arrests. It focused on reducing the burials to those with criminal records. What's unique about this, it was designed <laughs> by police and for the streets, natural approach. It focused on the hard core. It focuses on prevention, intervention, and deterrence. It uses a health, public safety, and social economic approach. What's unique about this also, it uses a hip hop approach that focuses on Generation Z and Generation Alpha. It uses emotional intelligence and critical thinking as a strategy. It focuses on ending the school to prison pipeline, ending recidivism, and looking at mental health and substance abuse as two major uh, components to crime. It also looks at community engagement by creating a sense of community. It has a partnership that includes the Department of Justice, the U.S. State's Attorney's Office, the courts, uh, the State's Attorney's Office, the Department of Corrections, the Juvenile Justice, neighborhood groups, the residents, higher education, businesses, the crisis center, substance abuse, and health. We are truly a comprehensive, holistic approach to reducing crime in West Tampa. This, we're using this as a model to show what can happen when all of the components come together to reduce the level of crime in our community. We will focus on saving lives by creating opportunities for folks. I want to thank you for giving me an opportunity to speak today. And again, I want to regenerate. I do think that the city council does need a raise when you look at the financial as well as the emotional strain that they have to go for. So you will put me down for that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Randolph. Mr. D'Angelo. Mr. D'Angelo, if you could hear me, please unmute yourself. Yes, please proceed. Hello. Okay. Hey, this is Angel D'Angelo, born and raised in Tampa. I'm coming here to echo a few things that have already been said. One being, it should be a no-brainer on the independent council. It's Tampa Police Department that's always running around and saying if they have, if you have nothing to hide, you shouldn't worry. So what are they hiding that they're so afraid of the independent council? On top of the fact, it's Mayor Jane Castor that's most adamantly opposed to it. And why do any of y'all care what she thinks after what she's done to all of you? Some, to some of you more than others. She hasn't had um, any positive impact on this city council. She's focused on Mayor Jane Castor and her career. You should not be focused on Major, Mayor Jane Castor's career. You should be focused on the people, and the people have largely demanded independent council. It's common sense. It's not radical. It's not difficult. It's really, it's, it's just do it. 
I also agree we don't need to add any F-150s to TPD. We need to start putting some money into things that matter, that are going to heal the community instead of over-policing and over-surveilling the community. You keep doing that, and, count, and council members have acknowledged before that crime is on the up, but you have funded the police department up and up and up and up for the last several years, and crime is still on the up. Maybe do something different. That's a radical idea. Let's do something different, or not a radical idea, rather. It's, it's important to do something different when something is not working. You have to change your trajectory. Otherwise, we're going to be in the same position forever. So don't approve any more money for them. They, they got it. Get an independent council. That's a good investment. And also protect the cemetery. It's common sense. This is your legacy. Do the work. The community should not have to beg for, the black community should not have to beg for their deceased relatives to be respected. They deserve respect in life. They can't hardly get that. And then they can't even get it in death. That's just ridiculous. That's not how Tampa should operate. So just do the right things. Don't worry about Mayor Jane Castor. She's going to be fine. Just do what you need to do. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Oates, are you on the line? Ms. Oates, if you could hear me, please unmute yourself. Ms. Oates, are you there? <coughs> Ms. Oates, can you please unmute yourself? Okay, let's move on to Mr. Nohava. Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Hi, uh, Joseph Nohava. I'm also with uh, Tampa Bay Community Action Committee. Uh, yeah, like uh, my uh, friends have all said, uh, I'm here to speak in favor of the independent council ordinance for the CRB, um, as well as in solidarity, solidarity and agreement with um, the Cemetery Society. There's absolutely no reason that um, the city can't do the right thing um, on this issue and make sure that these graves um, and these folks' loved ones are protected. Um, so, you know, it, it again, there's really no reason that um, the CRB shouldn't have its own attorney. I mean, nobody's really explained, I don't think, in any of this, not uh, those of you that oppose this, uh, not the mayor, you know, why they feel like the CRB is better when, you know, critical evidence is out of reach and the attorneys um, conflicted. That, you know, doesn't make any sense to me, and I don't think it makes any sense to um, anybody else. And, you know, it really comes down to what, you know, what, what is the purpose of the CRB? Is it designed to be an independent um, body that, you know, people are able to go to to hold, you know, TPD somewhat accountable? Or is it just um, a public relations kind of exercise? You know, uh, I, I think, again, you know, Miami, Key West, Broward, they all have um, their own attorneys for their CRBs and they haven't burned down. You know, it's really a, a reasonable request. And again, you know, with the way that the city allocates money, you know, to things again, like the, the trucks and radiation detector, it's just, you know, absurd. Um, especially, you know, given that y'all are reviewing, you know, the money for housing and social services that you allocated uh, last year that, you know, where's that money, right? It's dried up because he didn't allocate enough. As we told you last year, uh, exactly what would happen has happened. So, you know, I, I feel like this is on council and the mayor to adequately fund the things that people are actually asking for and actually need rather than extravagant, useless kind of expenditures that are not needed. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Pointer, are you on the line? Uh, good morning, Council. Good morning. My name is Stephanie Pointer. Um, I, I want to echo the sentiments about the CRB. I think um, listening to the citizens is really important. Um, Acela, we, we evidently have got us some training 
Mr. Hudgens is gonna it is uh, has three appointments in the next month. Although we'd like to see some in the evening, um, we'll get, get started with these, and I'll give you feedback on Acela. Um, Mayor's Youth Corps. I was introduced to Mayor's Youth Corps at the Mayor's Neighborhood University, which of course you guys have nothing to do with because you're not even honored enough to be part of that program. But I learned a lot about the Mayor's Neighborhood University, but I also noticed when those young people who are very bright young people, and I have nothing um, against um, any particular schools, but when you look that probably over 50% of them come from one particular school, <coughs> Um, in the city, uh, I, I think that that's not diverse. And uh, Councilman Goods has been asking about a program called TLC, which I actually knew nothing about. Um, and, and they're getting no funding, but the Mayor's Youth Corps gets all kind of funding. That's 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 some serious inequity. And um, pedagogy, if, for those of you who aren't teachers, um, that's the education of learning. Um, it shows that when you have uh, groups that are more diverse ethnically and financially, everybody is going to process, prosper from those interactions. And I heard people say, oh, well, the mayor's neighborhood or the, the mayor's youth corps requires kids to get there. Well, you know what? If we've got five or six kids from a school that's not as affluent, then we need to figure out how to get one of those parks and recs bus buses over there and pick them up and deliver them to Mayor's Neighborhood University or to the um, Youth Corps program. The bottom line is you can't fund for certain people and not for others. Right. And um, I know my high school that my son is going to only had four people in the Mayor's or the Mayor's Corps Youth Corps this year, which is not diverse at all. Um, so. Please remember that, and uh, last but not least, have a good day. Thank you. <laughs> Is there anyone else in Chambers who wishes to speak during public comment? Ms. Oates, are you there? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma good morning to the council. Sorry about that, technical difficulties. Um, so today I want to call in and talk um, in regards to the Mayor Youth Corps and the TLC program. Um, I am a parent of two kids that were actually utilized both program, Mayor Youth Corps, and it's, uh, my son is currently in the TLC program. And um, the inequities in those programs that I have experienced and seen personally is just <laughs> interesting to me. Um, and the fact that our kids at TLC are not allowed to utilize some of the funding to take trips to Washington or go to some of the programs that the NYC um, offers their kids to do. Um, it's really disheartening because my son, who's in a TLC program, seeing the opportunities that my daughter had when she was at Jefferson even when she was almost kicked out on several occasions because I couldn't get her to the meetings on time because I had to leave work in the middle of the day to get her there. Um, I hope you guys really look into those programs. Um, financially, they need to mirror each other. No, the kids in the TLC program may not need to do all the things that the older kids are doing, but the exposure to those for those kids is definitely needed. Um, and also the fact that we still over in East Tampa are having our kids pick up trash um, for the Stolen program is ridiculous. Um, just trying to understand why we still think that East Tampa children is less than and that's all they can do is pick up trash is a problem. Our kids in East Tampa are very educated and qualified to be in other positions that other neighborhoods are offering them. So, like I stated, City Council, thank you, Councilman Goose, for bringing this to the forefront again, because this is not your first time talking on these programs. But actually, I hope something comes out of this so all of our kids in Tampa, especially the kids in the TLC program, can benefit from some of the funding and not have to do fundraisers 
um, from the community to help support them. Thank you, City Council, and I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Councilman Carlson. Yeah, if I could just make a quick comment for anybody who's watching for the first time um, on Memorial Park Cemetery, uh, all of the things that were discussed were the, are the domain of the administration, the mayor's office, not city council. Um, city council can approve a contract and present it to us, or we can reject a contract, or we can request that the city staff do something. Um, we have done that it, sitting as a CRA board. We've offered to buy Memorial Park Cemetery, but the process that the city used to um, acquire the cemetery, which resulted in somebody else owning it, and now the process that's being used to buy it back has nothing to do with city council. Um, we've given our advice on it, but all we can do is like the public wait and see what proposal comes back. Uh, I know that representatives of the administration have come before us and said that they're in earnest trying to buy it back, uh, but just want to let the public know the city council um, uh, supports um, maintaining, preserving that cemetery. The other thing though is that we, uh, we and I hope staff will help us come up with a solution long term. We have to figure out a solution so that privately owned uh, cemeteries don't end up uh, being managed by the city. We, we should change state laws to uh, require larger trust funds so that they can uh, be self-sufficient in the future. This, this shouldn't happen again. Um, it's not fair that a private burden is put on taxpayers, but, um, but it's also not fair that people who trusted that their loved ones would be protected or, uh, um, don't allow them to protect. So in this case, for sure, we will end up um, protecting in, um, in the future. Thank you. I have a motion to open public hearings. So moved. So moved. Move to open all 9.30 a.m. public hearings. Shall we go ahead and go with 10.30? Because it's going to be that time before we're here. Move to open all public hearings. Thank you very much. We have a motion. Okay. Open all 9.30 public hearings. Sorry about that. Uh, we have a motion made by Councilman uh, Maniscalc, seconded by Councilman Miranda. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Thank you very much there. Motion passes. Let's go to agenda item number two, file number TA, CPA 22-19. Hey, good morning. Good Emily morning. Phelan. <laughs> Emily Phelan, Planning Commission staff. Item number two is TA CPA 2219, a comprehensive map amendment located at 2302 and 2304 North Boulevard. The request is to change the future land use from residential 10 to residential 20. This amendment was approved at the January 26, 2023 hearing and is in front of you today for second reading. And this concludes my presentation if you have any questions. Any questions for staff? Petitioner. Good morning, my name is Angela Halber with Hillward Henderson, 101 East Kennedy Boulevard. Um, I don't really have much of a presentation unless you have questions for me today. Any questions for the petitioner? Is there anyone in the public that wishes to speak to this? We have a motion to close by Councilman Miranda, seconded by Councilman Vieira. All in favor say aye. Aye. Place your votes and record. I'm sorry. Let, let's, let's go with Councilman Miranda. Okay, I'm sorry. I saw that there. Then we're going to have to go with Councilwoman Hertek. File number TACPA 22-19, ordinance being presented for second reading and adoption, an ordinance amending the Imagine 2040 Camp Tampa Comprehensive Plan, future land use element, future land use map, for the property located at 2302 and 2304 North Boulevard from residential 10, R10, to residential 20, R20, providing for repeal of all ordinances in conflict, providing for severability, providing an effective date. Second. We have a motion made by Councilwoman Hertak, seconded by Councilman Vieira. I place your votes and record. Motion carried with Miranda, Maniscalco, and Goog voting no. Thank you. Agenda item number three, file number E2023-8, chapter 22. Good morning, Council. Emma Gregory from the Legal Department uh, here for a second reading of this proposed ordinance amending sections 22-276 and 22-291 
updating the transportation technical manual with additional guidelines um, for mobility to use while evaluating uh, project designs. So just here for second reading and if you have any questions. Any questions for staff? Thank you. Petitioner. Thank you. Not, I'm sorry. <laughs> this, this is not petitioner. Okay. No questions? Is there anyone in chambers that wishes to make any comments? Thank you. Motion closed. Second. Motion closed by Councilman Miranda, seconded by Councilman Vieira. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Councilman Maniscalco. Thank you very much. I have an ordinance being presented for second reading and adoption. An ordinance of the City of Tampa, Florida relating to Chapter 22, Streets and Sidewalks, Article 3, Technical Provisions, Amending Section 22-276, Technical Standards may be established. Amending Section 22-291, Technical Standards adopted. By replacing the 2009 edition of the Transportation Technical Manual with the 2023 edition, Second. providing for repeal of all ordinances or parts of ordinances in conflict therewith, providing for severability, providing an effective date. We have a motion made by Councilman Maniscalco, seconded by Councilman Vieira. Place your votes and record. Motion carried unanimously. Thank you. Agenda item number four, file number E2023-8, chapter 18. I apologize. We're on item number four, correct? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> uh, item number four, as you know, is the second reading of the ordinance um, providing for um, outside counsel to be hired for the CRB. We've discussed this at length um, at this point to save time. I'm just happy to answer any questions unless you want me to reiterate what's in the ordinance. Thank you. Any questions? Councilman Goods. Nope. Councilman Woman Hurtak. Um, I just uh, want to reiterate again how much I appreciate uh, you um, working with us on making uh, this what we wanted. Um, and for all the folks who are out there today to come and speak on it, I want to say thank you uh, for continuing to focus on this. Uh, this is something that the people continuously tell us they want. Uh, and I feel strongly that this that the CRB is an entity. The members will change, but the entity remains under the power of the ordinance that we make. So regardless of how particular individuals on the board feel, the board should, should have, uh, should work for, um, for the people through us as council making the ordinance to, to maintain how that board will, uh, will work. So the reason, um, one, of the, one of the major reasons I'm voting for this is because I do want to see that board strengthen over time. And I think this will begin a process of strengthening to um, a point that will help citizens build and develop that trust that uh, many of them say is lacking. So to me, this is very important in that ability to bring trust together. And I'm hoping that once it's passed, that, uh, that we can work toward that together. Thank you. Councilman Carlson. I want to say the same thing in different ways. Um, I want to thank Ms. Zelma and her department. There are actually three examples today where, where I'm going to thank them, so I will sound like a broken record, but it's a, it's a breath of fresh air and a, and a, and a great um, collaborative relationship get, being able to get the, this kind of work from uh, the legal department so we appreciate it and um, also for anybody who's looking at this um, uh, it it benefits everybody um, just to have some additional level of objectivity <coughs> and it's not any kind of condemnation of legal department obviously the legal department in this case put it together you never know when a future legal department uh, because it's politically appointed politically influenced it could be pro-police and anti-police and so uh, this gives another arm's length to uh, allow objectivity and it and it benefits everybody if you're a police officer you would want as much <laughs> objectivity as as someone who um, it, it is adverse to a police officer so um, I want to thank everybody for doing this and I, I think this benefits everybody thank you Councilman Vieira. thank you very much Mr. Chair. And, and also wanted to thank Ms. Zellman especially there were some uh, in bringing this to an ordinance some things that you did on this that I think could 
address some really legitimate good faith concern for what I would feel would be unintended consequences of doing this. I think this is something that I always used to word reasonable because I, I, I think it's reasonable. You know, people talk about a conflict, there's big C conflict and then there's small C conflict or a, a potential small C conflict. I, I relate this a lot to an insurance company where if you're insured by let's say Geico and you get yourself in a motor vehicle accident, Geico could send you their in-house counsel who works as a Geico staff attorney or Geico could contract with an outside firm uh, right to represent your interest just like that in-house attorney would uh, and then they're paid separately through Geico through X law firm. Neither of them holds a, um, a, a big C uh, um, a conflict of interest but there's one that works directly for Geico and there's another one or Allstate or State Farm or each e-insurance whatever and then there's another one that works uh, through a, a, a law firm that, that is contracted through it. Again this just has um, it, it's a reasonable request to address an appearance. Uh, I, I don't believe that there's any issue that has arisen that I've seen obviously with our with our city attorney but again it, it's something that addresses uh, an appearance. I think it's something that's reasonable but again by, by doing uh, the things that you've done you also take a look at some of the unintended consequences and have done a very very good job in this regard. There are some things in the um, CRB that I have opposed uh, uh, moving forward with for example with subpoena power and I stand by that 110 percent. This is something that I feel is reasonable and has been tailored such that there um, can be no reasonably foreseeable unintended consequences with this. Uh, but again just thank you very much. Appreciate you. Anyone else? Anyone in the public wish to speak to this? Agenda item number four, file number E2023-8, chapter 18. Move to close. Second. We have a motion closed by Councilman Maniscalco, seconded by Councilman Vieira. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Councilman Vieira. Move an ordinance being presented for second reading and adoption ordinance of the City of Tampa, Florida, amending section 18-8H6. City of Tampa Code to provide for a citizen review board legal advisor who is not a city employee, providing for severability, repealing all ordinances in conflict herewith, providing an effective date. We have a motion made by Councilman Vieira, seconded by Councilman Carlson. Place your votes and record. Motion carried with Miranda, Maniscalco, and Citro voting now. Thank you. At this time, anyone who is going to be giving any type of testimony during the quasi-judicial part of our 930 hearings, can you please stand to be sworn in? Thank you very much. Agenda item number five, file number VAC 23-05. Ross Samuels, Development Coordination, presenting file number VAC 23-05. This is a substitute ordinance being presented for second reading adoption, um, which is a proposed vacating request to vacate the north and south portion of the alleyway located north of Columbus Drive, south of Kathleen Street, east of Fremont Avenue, and west of Rome Avenue. I'm available if you have any questions. Any questions for staff? Petitioner. Nothing to add unless you have questions for me. Can I say the name? Your name, please. Uh, Todd Hutchins, 3006 North Rome Avenue. Do me a favor. Step up to the podium so that you can I be in your voice. I apologize. I'm Todd Hutchins, and I live at 3006 North Rome and have nothing to add unless members have questions. Thank you very much. Is there anyone in council chambers that wishes to speak to agenda item number five? Move to close. Okay. We have a motion closed by Councilman Maniscalco, seconded by Councilman Miranda. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Councilman Carlson. Yes, I'd like to move item number five, file number VAC 23-05, substitute ordinance being presented for second reading adoption ordinance of the City of Tampa, Florida, vacating, closing, discontinuing, and abandoning that north-south diagonal <coughs> alleyway located at north of Columbus Drive, south of Kathleen Street, east of Fremont Avenue and west of Rome Avenue within the Platte of Bowman Heights subdivision in the city of Tampa, Hillsborough County, Florida, as more fully described in section two hereof, subject to certain covenants, conditions, and restrictions as more particularly set forth herein, providing for enforcement of penalties for violations, providing for definitions, interpretations, and repealing conflicts, providing for severability, providing effective date. 
We have a motion made by Councilman Carlson, seconded by Councilwoman Hertak. Place your votes and record. Motion carried unanimously. Thank you. Agenda item number six, file number REZ 22-107. This is Zane Hussein, Development Coordination. Uh, agenda item number six, case REZ 22-107. This is being presented for second reading and adoption. At the location 1206 West Lemon Street, proposed rezoning from RS50, residential single family, to PD, plan development, residential single family attached. Site plans have been turned into the city clerk's office. I'm here for any questions. Any questions for Mr. Hussain? Seeing no petitioner. Uh, good morning, Council. Steve Michelini representing the petitioner. You may recall that this was a, uh, a plan that we had to modify uh, to meet the city's uh, request regarding urban design, which we did, and then we submitted the revisions to the city staff, which is being presented to you for second reading. We respectfully request your approval. Thank you. Anyone in chambers that wishes to make comment on agenda item number six, REZ 22-107? Move to close. Second. Motion closed by Councilman Miranda, seconded by Councilman Maniscalco. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Councilman Miranda. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. File number REZ 22-107. Ordinance being presented for second reading and adoption. The owner's rezoning property in general vicinity of 1206 West Lemon Street in the city of Tampa, Florida, more particularly describing section one from zoning to district classification RS50 residential single family to PD plan development residential single family attached, providing an effective date. Second. We have a motion made by Councilman Miranda, seconded by Councilman Goods. Place your votes and record. Motion carry unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Agenda item number seven, file number REZ 22-37. Um, uh, agenda item number seven, seven. case REZ 22-34. I'm sorry, agenda item number seven, file number REZ 22-34. Yes, Zane Hussein, Development Coordination. This is being presented for second reading and adoption at the location 6-4, 60 Tampa Palms Boulevard. There's a proposed rezoning from PD plan development to PD plan development, place of religious assembly and daycare. Site plans have been turned into the city clerk's office. I'm here for any questions. Any questions for Mr. Hussain? Seeing none, petitioner. Good morning, council members. William Malloy, 325 South Boulevard, Tampa, Florida. <coughs> I uh, believe this case is in a very happy place. I'm not here to mess that up, just to answer any questions, if there are any. Thank you. Any questions for the petitioner? No. Seeing that, is there anyone in chambers that wishes to speak to this file, excuse me, agenda item number seven, file number REZ 22-34? Move to close. Second. Motion to close by Councilman Miranda, seconded by Councilman Maniscalco. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Councilman Goods. REZ 22-34. In ordinance rezoning property in the general vicinity of 6460 Tampa Palms Boulevard in the city of Tampa, Florida, and more particularly described in section one, from zoning district classification PD plan development to PD plan development, place of religious assembly and daycare, providing effective date. Second. We have a motion made by Councilman Good, seconded by Councilman Miranda. Place your votes and record. Motion carry unanimously. Thank you. Agenda item number eight, file number REZ 23-03. Zane Hussein, Development Coordination. This is being presented for second reading and adoption at the locations 2019 and 2023 Gordon Street. Proposed rezoning from RM16, Residential Multifamily, and CG, Commercial General, to PD, Plan Development, Residential, Single Family, Attached. Site plans have been turned into the City Clerk's Office. I'm here for any questions. Any questions for Mr. Hussain? Seeing none, petitioner. Good morning, Ralph Schuler, 2401 North Howard Avenue. Um, here to just acknowledge that we've turned in all the required documents and we're happy with the, the outcome and look forward to uh, seeing this project uh, move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone in chambers who wish to speak to this? 
Move Second. We have a motion closed by Councilman Maniscalco, seconded by Councilman Miranda. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Councilwoman Herta. File number REZ 23 03, ordinance being presented for second reading and adoption, an ordinance rezoning property in the general vicinity of 2019 and 2023 Gordon Street in the city of Tampa, Florida, and more particularly described in section one from zoning district classification RM16 residential multifamily and CG commercial general to PD plan development residential single family attached, providing an effective date. Second. We have a motion made by Councilwoman Hertak, seconded by Councilman Miranda. Place your votes and record. <coughs> motion carried unanimously. Thank you. Agenda item number nine, <coughs> file number REZ 23 08. 09. Uh, 09. Dyslexia again. Zane Hussein, development coordination. This is being presented for second reading and adoption at the location 2323 West North B Street. Proposed rezoning from RM16 residential multifamily to CN commercial neighborhood. This being Euclidean, no site plan is required. I'm here for any questions. Any questions for Mr. Hussein? Seeing none, petitioner. Agenda item number nine, file number REZ 23-09. Ms. Jones, are you there? Ms. Jones, are you with us? Yes, sir. You there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm here. We need to see your face on video, please. Okay. I'm, I'm trying to get it. Uh, there okay. you go. Here I am. Yes, sir. Okay. I need well, you, ma'am, I need for you to raise your right hand to be sworn in. Yeah. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony that you're about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Ms. Jones, do you, do you want to add anything else to this? No, no, sir. Okay. Thank you very much, Ms. Jones. Is there anyone okay. in chambers that wishes to speak to agenda item number nine, file number REZ 23-09? Move close. We have a motion closed by Councilman Good, seconded by Councilman Miranda. All in favor say aye. Aye. Is there any opposed? Motion carries. Where am I at? Councilman Maniscalco. Thank you very much. I have an ordinance being presented for second reading and adoption, an ordinance rezoning property in the general vicinity of 2323 West North B Street in the city of Tampa, Florida, and more particularly described in section one from zoning district classification RM16 residential multifamily to CN commercial neighborhood, providing an effective date. Second. We have a motion made by Councilman Menascaco, seconded by Councilman <clears throat> Goods. Place your votes and record. Motion carried unanimously. Thank you. Agenda item number 10, file number REZ 23-11. Zane Hussein, Development Coordination. This is being presented for second reading and adoption at the location 214 North Howard Avenue. Proposed rezoning from CG, Commercial General, to PD, Plan Development, Medical Office. Site plans were turned into the City Clerk's Office. I'm here for any questions. Any questions for Mr. Hussein? Seeing none, petitioner. Ralph Schuler, 2401 North Howard Avenue. Um, same thing here. I'm happy with the changes we made based on, on council and look forward to a successful project. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone in chambers who wishes to speak to agenda item number 10, file number REZ 23-11. Close. Second. We have a motion to close by Councilman Maniscalco, seconded by Councilman Goods. All in favor say aye. 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 Is there any opposed? Motion carries. Councilman Vieira. Yes, sir. Move an ordinance being presented for second reading adoption. Uh, an ordinance rezoning property in general vicinity of 214 North Howard Avenue in the city of Tampa, Florida, and more particularly described in Section 1 from Zoning District Classification CG Commercial General to PD Plan Development Medical Office. 
providing an effective date. We have a motion that's made by Councilman Vieira, seconded by Councilman Miranda. Place your votes <coughs> in the court. Motion carried unanimously. Thank you. May I have a motion to open to 1030? Second. Second. We have a motion made by Councilman Good, seconded by Councilman Miranda. All in favor say aye. Aye. Is there any opposed? Thank you. Agenda item number 11, file number VAC 23-09. And I believe there might be some people who just walked in who need to be sworn in. Thank you very much. Samus. Ross Samus, Development Coordination. I'd like to share the Elmo screen, please. It's there. <coughs> Presenting file number VAC 23-08. This proposed vacating request located in the general area of 1701 North Franklin Street. Representative's name is Tyler Hudson. This is a proposed vacating request to vacate the alleyway lying north of Henderson Avenue, south of 7th Avenue, east of Franklin Street and west of Florida Avenue. This application was filed February 8, 2023. The applicant owns property on the west side of the alleyway that is requested to be vacated. The applicant's reason for the application is the alley was previously vacated per VAC 16-19. However, one of the conditions of the ordinance was never completed. This application seeks to reinstate the originally approved vacating. This alleyway was created by subdivision Platt. The existing alleyway currently is approximately 2,424 square feet. <coughs> Here's an aerial view of the proposed vacating the alleyway in yellow and the property, owner's property in red. Again, the north section of this alleyway was previously vacated um, in 1920. Um, this was per ordinance 895. Again, this is the plat showing the proposed vacating request in red. And again, the previously vacated portion of the alley in yellow. This is an image of the alleyway looking north from Henderson Avenue. This is an image of the portion of the vacated alley looking south from 7th Avenue. Staff have no objections to this vacating request. Easement reservations are required by Frontier. Special conditions include natural resources and must comply with Chapter 27 in regard to tree preservation and site design for any improvements placed adjacent trees in any vacated area. Um, there is current, there wasn't a, an objection per our fire department, but however, they are looking at um, proposed ex, or current exits in the alleyway for the buildings. So there may be a permanent cross access easement needed before second reading if, if approved today in between first and second reading. So to give fire, the fire department inspectors enough time to get out and, and inspect that. And that concludes my presentation. I'm available if you have any questions. Any questions for staff? Seeing none, oh, Councilman Miranda. I just want to say this, and, 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 uh, and I'm not sure this is 100% correct, but many years ago, this was the entrance and exit to the garbage pickup in the city of Tampa. They had one driver, one catcher, and two individuals on each side that would throw the cans up and you dump it in. And the trucks were much narrower. They were not extended cabs. They were just regular cabs. And they had four individuals working. And they worked uh, very diligently and very hard. And that's the way it was back in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. In the 70s, it started to change. And, and these were the things that uh, was the norm at that time, whatever the norm may be today. But they, uh, they work very hard, and I just want to compliment the people who are no longer here, don't even vote anymore because they're not here. They've gone to heaven. But those individuals kept the city clean and moving just like the ones we have now. 
and to them I say kudos for everything you've done to help the city. It was very difficult then. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You will. Any other questions? Yeah. Petitioner. Good morning, Council. Tyler Hudson, 400 North Ashley Drive. Uh, Ross did a great job running through that. I just want to emphasize a couple of quick points. Uh, you saw a lot of pictures taken from the sky. Here, here's a picture taken from the street. The alley that we're talking about here runs behind this building. It's at 1701 North Franklin Street. It's called, uh, known as the Ferris Building. It's a historic building that um, Maureen Nayral, who's the owner of A2 LLC, which is the owner of the building, he's, he's here and we'll speak in a moment, has uh, done an incredible job of, of preserving and, and restoring over time. The project is, there, there is a restaurant tenant that's currently in the midst of constructing, uh, constructing out a restaurant that uh, we, able, we hope is able uh, to open in the near future. Again, it's important to note that it was back in, it was, it was 1920, which apparently by 1920, we were only at ordinance number 895 when the northern really 20% of this alley was vacated. So this is a dead end alley. Um, this alley, you know, in our view, I think in the city's view, ha has no real meaningful cross access, anything like that. This is really the, the, the back of house for the buildings on either side. To the left, um, to the west is, is what will be a restaurant building. To the right is sort of an industrial building that's currently used by, I believe it's called uh, Redeemer Church. They hold services there on, on Saturdays and Sundays. What makes this a little bit strange is that uh, this, this alley has, has already been vacated, um, which begs the question why I'm standing before you this morning. Council is aware that a lot of times when these alleys get vacated, there's several conditions that need to be met. The, typically, it's the city that reserves easements or a private entity that acts like the city does, Frontier, Tico, groups like that. This, uh, this vacating, which was approved in 2016, was a little bit unusual in that it required two private parties to themselves enter into an access easement. It was, it's the building that's shown in red and the building just east of it to the right. Um, for reasons that are lost to time, uh, that easement was never provided to the city. I think there was a little bit of dispute about whether it was actually required or not. Um, and even as Ross alluded to, there, there might even still be a little bit of question about that. Um, to avoid being here a third time, we're, we're going to do the easement. Uh, we're going to have it into the city within 180 days. If it turns out that that easement's uh, not necessary, then we'll, Ron uh, Wigginton and I have, have discussed you know, some mechanism by which the city will agree that the easement can go away. But again, it's not with the city at all. It's just with two neighboring property owners. The idea being that perhaps someone exiting from the rear of our building would perhaps walk across the half of the alley that belongs to the, the eastern neighbor. So uh, that's really the request. Uh, again, we, we, there's, there's, no, there's no current objecting agencies. Um, as of the date of the screenshot, there was from fire, but that's been resolved. Uh, we're not aware of any opposition to this request. To the contrary, I think you all have received some notes of support from Tampa Heights residents who are really excited about what this Franklin Street corridor can be. It's, it's kind of emerged and fits and starts. Uh, and we think a, a great <coughs> restaurant here is gonna really help, uh, help take it to the next level. And with that, I'd ask Maureen to chat a little bit about the work she's done. Council members, um, can you hear me? There's an easel right there. Oh. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be there. Oh, thank you. Um, Maureen Aral, 3401 Bayshore Boulevard, Tampa, Florida. I've been before you before supporting development in this area by a number of other entities. Um, the Salvation Army, when they wanted to consolidate and rezone, I was a big supporter because when I bought this building, in 2014, it looked like this. It was about to be condemned. This was the, the interior. I don't know which side is which. But the interior, the roof had collapsed. Water was flooding into the building. I had um, Mr. Fernandez from Tampa Historic Group come and look. And he was like, God bless you, because if you can't get this fixed right away, I don't know what you're going to be working with. 
So um, I've made a lot of mistakes. I am not a real estate developer. I'm not a professional real estate investor. I bought this as a hobby because I want to restore a historic building. And I will tell you, I have learned that real estate really isn't a hobby, it's a job. Um, I have another job though that fortunately pays the bills because for two years I could not even get a bank to look at this property. Um, it really, uh, it had gone from being beautiful with windows, the next page, the previous tenant, I mean the previous owner, God bless him, had um, owned it since the 70s. He was no longer receiving any income from rent and he actually had lost the ability to even have any business operate out of the second floor because he had been arrested for having kitty raves back in the 70s. So um, he was very happy to have us come in and hit his number and buy the property and for two years I did everything from <coughs> replace the roof, the HVAC, the um, electrical, plumbing, everything, just so I could show it to tenants. And at that point, I didn't have enough money to even take out the bricks, which were structurally um, damaging the property because they weren't put in there properly. So, 2017, the Hall and Franklin, I was on the board with the owner of that. He asked me if he could do a food hall. I said, that's a great idea. So we worked together, and let me tell you, this building <laughs> went from, you know, really a deplorable situation into three or four years later, it was generating 4.4 million in sales of food and alcohol. It employed 50 hospitality workers who made over a million dollar salary plus over half a million dollars in tips, and um, it helped support the 400% increase in real estate taxes that I experienced. So now we have another food hall. You know, unfortunately, COVID destroyed a lot of businesses in the area. As a matter of fact, the Hall in Franklin, um, in the winter months leading up to um, the, when we had to shut down for COVID, had 10 to 15,000 people a month in there. And all the businesses on the street benefited, every single one of them. And I hear from them all the time. In um, 2018, I started a, Frank, a Yellow Brick Row Business Association so that we could speak with one voice. And they're all in support of, please, opening up another you know, space that's gonna draw people. It could have been a furniture store, but that's not going to get the kind of activity that this area needs. So I'm asking for your help because the condition that Tyler Hudson mentioned earlier that I did not understand with the first vacating was between me and Tommy Martino, who was a lawyer. And I thought the purpose of this cross alley access was so that Jamal, who needed to build a freezer in his property, would have permanent access to his building to... Um, to run his kitchen. Well, it turned out that was part of the reason. The other part was to exhaust um, the hoods to the roof. Tommy, who was a lawyer, came to me. He let it expire. John Grandolf wrote the first one. It expired. And he said, Maureen, we don't need to do this because Jamal and I have um, come to an agreement. He's going to give us $500 a month in gift cards. And so we don't need this. So I let it go. I didn't realize. And now I'm back, um, quite a few years later, asking that you give us a hand. Thank you. Any questions for petitioner? I, I have one. Is this the old Carpenters Union Hall? Yes, it is. Thank you. Let Thank me you. tell you, in 1954, it, was going through my head. it opened in 1920, Ferris Automobile. And in 1954, it became the Carpenters Union Hall. And it was for many, many years. As a matter of fact, it took me two enormous dumpsters to get out all their materials that were stacked in the rafters. Uh, it, it was just amazing. I did save some of it, by the way. I, I was going to ask you that. I you sure saved did. some of it. Thank you. Thank you, sure. Councilman Carlson. Do you, do you need to disclose any rave parties you went to there? Ah! 
I was just having a, a conversation with uh, Councilman Miranda. I think I might have been at a couple of those parties. I wasn't arrested, but I think I was at a couple of those parties. Amazing. I can be fair and impartial. <laughs> and, and, and the other questions for uh, the petitioner? Thank you so much. Thank you. Seeing that is, is there any members, excuse me, is there anyone from the public wishing to give public comment on file number VAC 23-08? Have a close, uh, motion to close by Councilman Good, seconded by Councilman Maniscalco. All in favor say aye. Aye. Is there any opposed? For your question, Councilman Carlson, would you please read this off? <laughs> Move. Uh, uh, item number 11, file number VAC 23-08, ordinance being presented for first reading consideration. Ordinance, the city of Tampa, Florida, vacating, closing, discontinuing, and abandoning that alleyway located north of Henderson Avenue, south of 7th Avenue, east of Franklin Street, and west of Florida Avenue within the plat of Livonia Dodds Klein subdivision in the city of Tampa, Hillsborough County, Florida, as more fully described in section two here of sec, uh, subject to certain covenants, conditions and restrictions as more particularly set forth herein, providing for enforcement and penalties for violations, providing for definitions, interpretations and repealing complex, providing for severability, providing effective date. We have a motion made by Councilman Carlson, seconded by Councilman Vieira. Roll call vote. Perte. Yes. Carlson. Yes. Good. Yes. Vieira. Yes. Maniscalco. <clears throat> yes. Miranda. Yes. And Citro. Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Second reading and adoption will be held on May 4th, 2023 at 9.30 a.m. Thank you very much. Agenda item number 12, file number E2023-8, chapter <coughs> two. Uh, good morning, Council. Morris Massey, Legal Department. Um, just to remind Council, about 30 days ago, per your motion, um, our department or I drafted a proposed ordinance uh, regarding the honorary naming of city-owned property. That would include city buildings, recreational facilities, parks, streets, not the official names of streets, but an honorary secondary name of streets, and similar types of facilities. That draft ordinance provides a uniform criteria that would be applied for the review of all requests made by private parties, motions made by city council, or uh, an administrative uh, uh, request for an honorary naming. Uh, it also provides that city council by may through it uh, as long as that as long as that request meets the criteria in the ordinance, then an ordinance will come to city council and for your approval, it, it does not need to go through the mayor, it would go directly to you as an ordinance. Um, she would have the similar similar uh, prerogative to go through an executive order process. Um, the criteria, though, is the same. The review process is the same. The Real Estate Services Division is being tasked with doing the review. Um, before you this morning is a clarification to, to, uh, to state that basically that, that uh, the Real Estate Services Department uh, or division has to conduct the appropriate due diligence to make sure that the criteria is met in the, in the ordinance. Um, also, uh, there were a couple of clarifications that were requested primarily by Councilman uh, Carlson that are included in this, which would include one of the criteria is that uh, a person uh, that we're honoring has not been a, uh, convicted of a felony or a, a civil rights violation. And also uh, there's a requirement that's been added that any, uh, uh, whether it's a motion from you all or for a request from the administration or from some private individual, that that uh, request to uh, name city owned property after a, a person or an entity or group be published on the city website for 14 days so that we can solicit public comment if there's any regarding that request. And that would be part of the report that's given to council or to the mayor before any actions taken on the request. I'm here for any questions. Councilman McCarls. Yeah, this is the second one today. I want to thank the uh, legal department, in particular Ms. Zellman and, and Mr. Massey <coughs> for uh, working with us on this. Um, uh, this started with the, I guess we made a bunch of requests over the last two or three years and then the mayor put together a committee to get advice on um, what the criteria should be and then based on that committee there was an executive order and all this is is a matching ordinance that um, I guess codifies the the, um, the executive order it even modifies the executive order and um, and it, uh, it it gives equal rights to city council and the mayor with the standard criteria being there I think it's a very fair document appreciate the administration mayor's office and uh, legal for working this out 
um, I, I think it's a great solution. Thank you. Any other comments? Hearing none, is there anyone in council chambers that wishes to speak to file number E2023 HF2? Second. We have a motion to close by Councilman Maniscalco, seconded by Councilman Miranda. All in favor say aye. Aye. Is there any opposed? Motion passes. Councilman Miranda. Thank you, Chairman. Under number 12, file number E2023 slash 8. I'm sorry, there's a uh, substitute. Uh, substitute resolution. I don't the title is on the addendum. Thank you very much, Mr. Goose. File number 2023 slash 8, Chapter 2. Substitute order is being presented for first reading consideration. An ordinance of the City of Tampa, Florida, pertaining to the naming of city-owned property in honor of a person, group, or entity, amending Chapter 2 administration of the City of Tampa Code by adding Article 11, entitled X1, entitled Honorary Naming of City-Owned Property, together with Section 2 slash 826, Title and Purpose, Section 2 slash 827, Definition of Clarification of City-Owned Properties, Section 2 slash 828, Honorary Naming Criteria, Section 2, 829, Application Requirements, Section 2, 830, Review Process, Section 2, 831, Exemptions, Section 2, 832, Recession of Removal, Section 2 slash 833, Effect an Executive Order, Reserving Sections 2 slash 834 slash 2, 849, Providing for repeal of our ordinance and conflict, providing for severability, providing an effective date. Second. I'm going to get you some water, Councilman Miranda. Well, I need more than water. <laughs> uh, we have a motion made by Councilman Miranda, seconded by Councilman <coughs> Goods. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Is there any opposed? Roll I'm sorry, roll call. Carlson? Yes. Goods? Yes. Fiera? Yes. Menescalco? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Hertek? Yes. And Citro? Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Second reading and adoption will be held on May 4th, 2023 at 9.30 a.m. Thank you. Uh, I normally like to have motions held until later on until information reports. However, now that we have put this into motion, thank you both staff and council for making sure that we have this in motion. Uh, after the wonderful presentation of contributions of Mr. Urbanski in January, I reached out to staff to request an honorary street name. So that we have records of all our requests, I would like to enter my request into our records as a motion. I move that staff look into the honorary street naming to recognize the contributions of Mr. Jim Urbanski to our city the former editor of the Tampa Tribune. In the area of the Tribune building and the staff report back on June 15th. So I move the staff look into an honorary street naming recognizing the contributions of Mr. Jim Urbanski to our city in the area of the Tribune building and the staff report back on June 15th. In one clarification regarding your motion, please. I, th I think there may be some pending motions on the calendar regarding that, not as specific as yours is, um, Councilman Citro, but I, if, if we could combine all those, because sometimes we end up with repetitive motions of, that are about the same subject matter. Then I'll add that we, that we yeah. include all of those for June 15th. We have a motion from second. Chairman Citro. Do we have a second? Second from Councilmember Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Anything else? That's it. Who'd receive the phone? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> yes, you are. I know you are. You're such a funny guy. Thank you, Council, for indulging me. Uh, agenda item number 13, file number E2023-8, Chapter 19. Good morning. Kamari pettis from the Legal Department. I prepared the um, specific ordinance item for item number 13 on behalf of the Neighborhood Enhancement Department. Uh, making amendments to Chapter 19 property maintenance structure in order to um, remove the rental certificate uh, language in the Chapter 19 provision. And Ms. Wynn is present um, from staff if you have any questions from her. Any questions for staff? 
Councilman Miranda? No. 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 Thank you. Is there anyone in chambers that wishes to speak to agenda item number 13, file number E2022 8, chapter 19? Move close. Second. We have a motion to close by Councilman Good, seconded by Councilman Maniscalco. All in favor say aye. Aye. Is there any opposed? Motion carries. Councilman Good. All right. Uh, E2023 18, Chapter 19. In ordinance of the City of Tampa, Florida, relating to a rental certificate program, making revisions to the City of Tampa Code of Ordinances, Chapter 19, Property Maintenance and Structural Standards, repealing all ordinance or parts of ordinance in conflict Second. therewith, providing for severability, providing effective date. We have a motion made by Councilman Good, seconded by <coughs> Councilman Miranda. Any further discussion? Councilwoman Hertak. Uh, I, I know that we've been talking about this for a long time. Um, I, I am a proponent of rental certificate programs, though, so I'm, I'm not going to be able to vote for this. Um, it's really hard to bring something back once you get rid of it, and so I, I, think, I think that that we could have moved this to something, but I understand it was in the works way before I joined council. So I just wanted to explain my vote. Councilman Miranda. Chairman, I appreciate everyone's comments and everything regarding this ordinance, uh, changing of the ordinance anyway. But going back four mayors, they've been collecting this rental certificate. When you collect money from the taxpayers, no matter what amount it is, if it's a penny or a thousand dollars, you have to give a service. And in this case, there was no service. There was just a tax based on your rental certificate and administrative fees and other issues that came up. Uh, I'm not speaking that uh, this is purely correction of this thing. This is something that's been going on for three or four mayors in the past. And, and what it does, it collects money without the government doing any process for or against the betterment of society. There was never a rental inspection that I know of on all the ones that, that I, I know people who have them, including myself, I have a trust that does that, or, or the trust that runs me, one of the two. And this has never happened. So I'm not against taxation, but this, if you want to see a model of taxation without representation, this is it. And I challenge the public or the administration of any one of the past three mayors they come up and say that they've done one thing in one inspection of a rental unit. What has happened here is that we have a regressive or a progressive or any type of court enforcement that instead of going out and finding out the real facts of what's going on, not only in some districts, but throughout the city in one way or another, there are individuals who buy a house and they have four names and they buy a house under one name. All of a sudden they buy a house and another name of what one of the parties being left out. And this is all probabilities and possibilities that happens. So no one that I know of verifies all that's going on. However, when they rent the property out, the house next door to you is paying no additional tax, just a basic tax, and somebody's taking more than likely the homestead exemption with it. So these are things that have been going on throughout the city, mainly in two districts, five and six, without anyone reporting it to anyone. So in other words, the property owner in an X, Y house, an X house next to a Y house, the X house is paying four or $5,000 in rental and it has nothing to do with this. It has to do with paying your taxes like you should be paying your taxes when you have rental property and no one's against that. However, the Y house next to the X house, I'm not trying to confuse you, I just wanna make sure I delineate the two houses. That house, first thing happens, you get what? Solar. The next thing you get what? A fence around it. The next thing you get what? A change of venue of that house from residential to profit-making rental. And some of them are made right next to anyone's house. And if you don't believe me, I can show you a hundred of them because one or two administrations in the past, I think, realized the problem and did a study of 121, I believe it was, houses in a small area in a certain geographical section of the city that had these. However, no administration had the courage to try to change what's happened. So the school board needs money. Every government needs money. 
there are millions of dollars left on the table because we do not do the right thing and make everyone qualify under the same section. Right. When you apply and you turn in your taxes to the federal government, the IRS, they at least look at it and tell you if you did the right thing or the wrong thing and you come to some agreement. In this case, it's always been the wrong thing without no one doing anything to suffice the situation that we have. We certainly have enough money there that it was collected would help alleviate some of the problems. Notice I said some of the problems. You're not going to alleviate all of them. But this city, this county, and this school board ought to get together to find out what's going on so that those funds can be delineated to something that is useful for society. And I'm just going to use an example for it. Certainly you've heard about transitional housing, workforce housing. This could use for that, possibly. The school board needs additional funds for a lot more things. The county needs funds for the same thing we're asking for. But no one has gone out and make a concerted effort to solve these problems that we have. And this is a problem that's there. It's not going to go away. It's only going to exacerbate the situation further and longer. And you're going to have more houses that you think are residential that are not residential. They're commercially used for rental properties, and there's no tax being collected on the ad valorem side for rental property. So I, I rest my case with that. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Cousin Water. Um, I just want to uh, say that um, this, for me, doesn't have anything to do with taxation. Uh, I believe the fee for that stopped years ago because. Um, you know, all you really had to do was go in and just say that you had a rental house. Um, there was no fee attached. At least once I be started becoming a landlord in this city, I was expecting a fee but um, didn't have one. Um, so to me, this doesn't have anything to do with taxation. This just has to do with the fact that um, I think that rental certificate programs, when done correctly, are a good thing. And that's um, obviously it sounds like they weren't doing what they were supposed to do, but uh, I still think they're. I think I still think they could be a positive um, for the city. So, thank you. Any other comments? Thank you. Roll call vote. I thought Councilman Guth did. He did. Vieira. Yes. Guth. Yes. Maniscalco. Yes. Miranda. Yes. Hertek. No. Carlson. Yes. And Citra. Yes. Motion carried with her tech voting no. Second reading and adoption will be held on May 4th, 2023 at 9 30 a.m. Thank you very much. Agenda item number 14, fall number E 2023 8, chapters 23 and 27. Good morning again. Kamaria pettis from the legal department. I prepared the uh, specific ordinance associated with item number 14 on behalf of the zoning department <coughs> and the neighborhood enhancement um, department to provide an additional tool for the departments to enforce violations of code sections 27, 289.7. Currently, um, the departments are only able to use a notice of violation that's heard before a code enforcement special magistrate to address those violations. The departments would like an additional tool of the ability to be able to provide citations to um, those individuals who may vi be violating this code section. That's one of her tech. And what exactly do this, does this code section do? This code section, as and I can provide it on the ELMO, this is. Just so the public is aware. Is this, this specific code section 27289.7 is entitled Prohibited Signs Enumerated. And so an example of a prohibited sign is enumerated is a feather sign. So. That's according to the chart on in code section 27289.7. I'm just giving you an example of what is prohibited in the code. Um, so if the department. I'm sorry, we don't have anything up on our mind. Thank you.
This is just the list of examples of signs that are prohibited. But currently, right now, currently, uh, the departments only have the ability to issue notices of violations. In certain circumstance, circumstances, the departments would like to have the ability to issue citations. And that's what this ordinance will allow them to do. Councilwoman Herjack. I have to say that I think uh, folks will be really excited about the snipe sign one. <laughs> Anyone else? I, I just want to, I, I wholeheartedly agree with what was said. Uh, uh, Sometimes you drive by a neighborhood and it's nice and peaceful as far as signs that you see that are, when your eyes hit it, you can see that there's something wrong somewhere because all you see is a uh, some type of animal for sale or bird for sale or come uh, do this and we have a and, and I know there's a regulation regarding uh, when you have a yard sale I think you have if I remember you can have three a year I'm not sure but sometimes they, they do three a month and and those things are, are uh, well when, when you go within the law you do, certainly doing it right but when you start doing it on a, on a weekly basis it, it sort of devalues the neighborhood's value and uh, it becomes a nuisance of cars coming in and out at all times of the day and sometimes into the night. So I appreciate the effort that the legal department, the administration is making to uh, suggest some of these things should be banned. Thank you very much. Councilwoman Hertak. Uh, <clears throat> can you immediately find someone or would it, would it be a warning and then a fine? Uh, that process is determined by the code, but the department will utilize different resources, whether it's initially providing a warning to the property <coughs> owner to please remove the sign, um, and that it's a prohibition according to the code, and then initiating a citation. That will be up to the department. Because I, I have to say, I mean, I can see the snipe signs that are attached to telephone poles, utility poles, that sort of thing. Um, but people really don't understand where the right of way is. So I, I'm concerned that someone might put a sign in their yard per se and then all of a sudden they get a fine but they didn't know that the front part of the yard was the right of way um, we have that all the time uh, in our neighborhood um, so and, and i've heard that uh, all throughout this election cycle of hey there are signs in the right of way and um, so how do we how how are we going to educate the public before we start giving citations. Otherwise, we're just going to have a flood of people coming to City Hall. Yes, Councilwoman Hertek, I understand. I mean, yeah, I'm not sorry yard to... sales, the whole thing. I, I understand know. your um, concern. Obviously, this is for the department to issue, to initiate uh, an educational component regarding this matter. And I'm sure the department will do that along as they do with any enforcement, is to educate the community in the neighborhood regarding um, any new provisions that they're trying to address. So I'm sure the department will um, definitely utilize that as an educational tool before they issue the citation. Councilman Goose. I can't support something right now when the community hasn't been educated. I mean, if we pass this and we start going out, the department going tomorrow, she's right. We're going to get an influx of people coming. We have to educate the people first. I mean, number two, Another thing I, I see with these signs, you know, they, they're all over the poles and communities and they're isolated. But, uh, you know, sometimes we what they call uh, runners. But you have actual printing companies or businesses that, that employ these runners to go out there and put these signs up. So I'm just trying to figure out how do we cite or who do we cite because, you know, you get a, a young kid, he's trying to make a couple of bucks. He don't know. Go put signs up. So do we go back and also look at the people who are actually making those signs or <coughs> employing them to put those signs up? One, one thing I want council to be aware of when you're debating this issue is these prohibited signs have been on the books for years. So this is not a new, brand new requirement that you can't do this. Uh, and we have been enforcing the code. This is just merely another mechanism to enforce the code. Now, I understand the concern and I mean, we, you, if you wanted to, we could, maybe delay the effective date and come back to you with a delayed effective date so that there can be some education. But, but, but just so you all know, this list of prohibited signs has been in the code since I was here the first time 
20 years ago. So I, and Mr. Massey, I, I totally agree. I understand. Yeah. But with time, people die, new people are born, people don't know rules. I totally agree with what you're saying, but people don't know to know. Well, they, the, part, the department just, um, Councilman Goose, just to make you aware, the department already issues notices of violation regarding violations of this code. They are heard right now by the Code Enforcement Special Magistrate. That's as of right now, and I have statistics about the number of violations that have been issued for this code section alone for the past three years. This, again, is just providing another tool for the enforcement to, for the department to enforce this code. Councilwoman Hurtak. I think that I would be more in support of this if there was a delineation of the first time you're going to get a warning, the second time you can get a fine. Because again, we are going to have so many people coming who just don't know. And if you leave it up to uh, the code enforcement officer, we need to make sure that it's, that it's equal throughout, that it's, that it's being used um, in the same way. So I think that it's, I, I, I don't disagree with the idea of a citation. I just, I don't agree with it being, it being just up to the, to the officer to decide whether or not that person gets a warning or a violation. I, I think that you have to have a warning first. The process for ish for addressing this violation that is already in the code. Um, again, this is up to the department to determine the process of talking to the respondent, educating the respondent, and deciding after that education component, if the violation still exists, it's up to the department to say the citation is going to be issued or a notice of violation is See, going to be issued. I, I agree, but what I'm saying is that that it should be a requirement that that notification happen first. Well, the other thing, just so council's aware, is that while the department issues the notice of violation, that notice can be contested. It is not an automatic you have to pay. Yeah, uh, they ha that can be contested in court. That's a civil citation. So that that's the process. So there are a lot of people that don't know how that that works, and the fact that they can contest it. I think we're just adding a we're adding a layer of bureaucracy where if we simply give a warning first, and then the second time you have that option of what you want to do with it. I think it. what we're talking about is amending some other sections of the code, that we, and so we'd have to come back and talk to you about that, because there's a whole, the, there's the civil citation process has been in, in effect for a long period of time in the city, and it's been a process by which we've been able to address code enforcement without taking them through the code enforcement process. They're supposed to be fairly simple type of violations on their face so that you, you and so they, they can get addressed you know and I think what the, the department tries to do is they try to educate and give warnings I don't know if that's mandated in the code we'd have to go back and look at that so if that's what you're asking for you can certainly make that motion we can look at that process so I mean we, we could certainly turn this into a workshop I don't, I don't want to I mean I, I think overall the idea is a good idea it's just we need to make sure that we're not creating more uh, headaches for the public. Councilman Goods. Mr. Gary, oh, oh, are we pressed for time on this, or can this be uh, set for a workshop or for some of the questions to be answered for, for council? Because I don't think we're going to be able to, you're going to be able to answer all the questions today because it seems like it's something else is going into something else. Is this pressed for time to get with the departments? No, no, Mr. Councilman Goods. I see Ms. Wynn approaching. Yes. Watch yourself, be careful now. Yes, Lucia Wynn, Administrator of Neighborhood and Community Affairs. I would advise that we do workshop so that you can understand what the current process is for code enforcement when we, the uh, steps that are taken before we actually issue a notice of violation and before it goes to the magistrate so that you can understand how critical and important it is that we have this this interim piece in place so yes and and thank you for that and I would 100% agree uh, and I think it's 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 all it's for our edification but I think it's also could be great for the public to see that before we put this into effect because signs are just something that are 
I mean, it's a huge problem, but it's also something that people want to be able to do correctly. So I think uh, that's a great idea, Councilman Goods. So I, um, uh, do we have a free workshop? Um, the, the 27th is a, is all the housing. Um, how, um, is, is May too soon? May, what date in May? What At 25th. May 25th. May 25th should work, yes. Because right now it's relatively empty. <clears throat> we, the only thing you've just added to it was uh, everything related to pure and wastewater research. Yes, pure and wastewater, but I think. And, and one other item for that. So. Yes, okay. Uh, if it turns out that it's a problem either for too many things or if you need more time, I think we can just let us know. That I will. So, um, so I make a motion to, to take item number 14 and turn it into a uh, workshop item agenda for May 25th. Second. We have a motion from Councilwoman Hurtak to take file number E2023-8, chapters 23 and 27, uh, to be continued until May 25th workshop date. Second. We have a second by Councilman Maniscalco. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Councilman Carlson. Is there any other comment? All in favor say aye. 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 Is there any opposed? <coughs> Councilman Carlson. I would, <coughs> excuse me. I would like to add a, a companion motion to have um, Ms. Wynn <coughs> and code enforcement come before us just before or after that discussion to talk about the current status of enforcement of the code and uh, where the fines are going. That's, that's for all code, not just this signs. Um, to the point that uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Council Member Miranda made earlier about the, the rent cer rental certificates. Um, the, I don't know about you all, but I'm getting complaints every day about uh, code violations and people don't know um, if, if people are frustrated because things aren't being enforced, the fines aren't being given. Um, uh, we spent a lot of time three or four years ago on uh, increasing the, the fine for um, pushing leaves into the street because they blocked the storm drains and everywhere I go now they're pushing into the, into the again. Mm -hmm. And so in, in general, um, I, I would just like to hear as a companion what's happening with code enforcement and, and secondly, where do the fines go if it, to Mr. Councilman Miranda's point, uh, if there's supposed to be a service provided, the money for those fines in theory should be going toward code enforcement of the issues. All right, so. Mr. Shelby. Well, I believe, and we can answer that, I, my understanding is that's a fine I suspect is different than a fee for a rental certificate. Um, I don't know, they're talking about rental certificate. All, yeah, I know that. But all I, code, and I just want to update on all code enforcement and also right. where the fees are going. Okay. And, and all. And just, I, I think that would be helpful to council, especially in the new term, um, because one of the issues, again, relative to code enforcement is the fact that state legislature has required that they can no longer be anonymous, that people have to give their names. And my understanding from what I hear is that uh, that could in very f have an effect on people's ability and willingness to be able to uh, address the concerns of the community. So this might be an opportunity for the council to discuss that. Councilman Goods. If I recall, I think it was in 2020, we, we, I asked for code to come and, and explain where that money goes. Because I wanted that money to, to if, if, you, if you're giving violations to housing and things like that, why wasn't that money going into a housing fund? Remember that? And I believe I was told that the money that's, that they're collecting in fines or what have you goes to support or allocate slots for code enforcement. I believe that was the, the answer that I was given. Now, I, it's been a while because I was wondering, well, if code is doing violations on houses and collecting fees, those fees should be going into a housing trust to help with the housing crisis, the housing situation. So I support that, Mr. Carlson, to find out exactly where those dollars are actually being spent as far as where those fines, if it's for the code enforcement department or where 
does that go in lieu of their department? So maybe it's time to revisit again, but I, I can recall, I did ask about that in 2020. Ms. Wren. Yes, Osea Wren, Administrative of Neighborhood and Community Affairs. I would ask if you're asking us to come back, we come back after the workshop because I think there are more items that may arise and then we can focus in on the motion a little bit more to make sure we're providing you with the information that you're requesting. So you're saying uh, the next workshop instead of May 25th, like a, a June? No, sir. What, no, sir. Uh, what I'm saying is that you, I thought I heard your motion to say that we come before or after the workshop. Okay, you want it after. I'd rather do it after okay. the workshop in case there are things that come through the up uh, in the workshop that we can address at that point in time. Okay as well as uh, we can hone in a little bit more on the request because it is somewhat general. So my motion was to, to have, and I'll just clarify based on what she said, to ask Ms. Wynn and code enforcement to come uh, after the discussion on, um, on, the, on the previous code issues to um, at the May 25th workshop to uh, discuss um, code enforcement in general and where the um, code enforcement fines are going. Is there a second? A second. Motion made by Councilman Carlson, seconded by Councilman Vieira. Any further discussion? Councilman Hurtak. Uh, I, I understand you asking to come on a different date. Am I correct? No, ma'am. What so I'm asking, still yeah, on two, the 20th. Two, two dates. Yes, yeah, that's what I'm saying. First, the workshop on the 25th of yes. May. And then to address Councilman Carlson's um, motion after that, in case there okay. are things that come up that, on the 25th, we that's can address That's what I heard. Time. So yes, I'm going to recommend, if I could amend your motion, um, the next, uh, a good one would be August 31st workshop session. We don't have a workshop in July. You, you meant immediately oh. after on the same day, right? No, give us some time to research oh, okay. in case there are some things that come up. Oh, good one. Yeah, we don't have a workshop in July. Uh, we could do June if that's enough time. June. June, June should be Okay, enough time, June yes. 22nd then. Okay, I modify my motion to have it come back on June 22nd then, please. I'm amenable. Motion made by Councilman Carlson, seconded by Councilman Vieira. Any further discussion? Councilman Miranda. If I may add on this, I'm not trying to push on anything on the wagon that the, the horse can't pull it, but it, it uh, there's some other things that you can add into this workshop. A uh, couple of them hit my mind real quickly is the violation on a house that comes before and, and it's getting more and more prevalent. You see it every week, just about every week now where someone buys a house and he's a second or third owner, or she's a second or third owner, whatever, and now they get cited for something that the original owner did 15 years ago or five years ago. And we have to get, the, I believe in my judgment, get the Board of Realtors involved uh, at the time they make a sale. Uh, we don't record everything that happens. Uh, we just, and, and I go back to the swales on the house. It's 25 years ago, 20 years ago. Somebody comes here with their lovely wife and they want to buy a house, but the requirement for the drainage was swales at that time. Because if they didn't have the swales, they would more likely flood one or both on either side. So all of a sudden they sell the house to me. I don't know what happened there. It doesn't come up when they do the due diligence of finding out everything about the properties and the attorneys do the due diligence to, to, for the closing. So now I buy the house. I'm there six months. And I said, you know what? I want to fill in the swales. I want to plant some nice looking plants. I'll fill in the swales. And it works until it rains in June, July, and August. So now the properties get flooded on both sides. Well, they come after me. I didn't know the violation was there. The original owner knew it was there, but by the time we, we get it, it's done deal. So how do we solve that problem? And, and these are the things that I want to discuss in a workshop with the, with the Board of Realtors possibly to make sure that they don't get caught in the middle. And the next one is, again, in District 4 and District 5, I mean District 6 and District 5, I think I said four before and I want to correct myself, it's five and six. You see the preponderance of semis being parked on the road. Yeah. 
some with the trailer and tractor, some with just a trailer. It used to be that the court enforcement officers would see it and it would put a sign on it and all of a sudden that disappeared. Maybe it was illegal to put a sign for a notice of violation, but it was a notice so you would not get fined the first time. And they would tell you on that notice that if you found a second time, they have the right to even pull it away. I don't know what's happened to that, but I see more and more of that happening, not only in areas where there's a lot of dwellings, but areas even in the areas of uh, High Drew Park, where you see this says no parking, and you see a big rig there over the weekend on the city right of way parked. The problem with that is, <coughs> is what about some kids on the other side of that semi comes out? No one can see him, see him or her. And this could be a catastrophe for some family that we're trying to avoid. So I'd like to add these two in, is we still have the right to put a warning on every time you see a tractor or a tractor <coughs> and trailer that says, you know, belong here, this is not zoned for that. And if you see the streets that are going to be paved here more likely sooner than later, what does a semi do to the heavy weight continuously on those city streets? It tears them apart. So we're exacerbating ourselves by saying we want to do this, and yet we pass an ordinance, and it's very hard to, to enforce. So I'd like to find out if I may add these two, the semis and the violation of when somebody buys a house. And the reason I bring this up, there's one in the county, believe it or not, that I'm working on. The individual stopped me at the racetrack and told me all about his problem. He was a third owner of the house. And his case was that he built something that was six inches greater than, and somebody called and said, I don't want this because he's done a violation. Well, when they came and saw that, they came to an agreement, even with the homeowners association, but what they fined him for was some wall that the previous owner, the original owner, had put up 25 years ago. And now they want him to fix it. So these are the things that happen. Councilman Miranda, on the, the, the swale issue, I think there's a pending motion that I think uh, where uh, the administration is supposed to report back to you and provide uh, information on. I don't know where that is. I know it's been continued a couple times. I think Mr. Beatty is involved in that. And, and so. if I can, and I really appreciate that, Mr. Massey, <laughs> but maybe we can put all this into one and have a, a convincing afternoon of talking to some problems that maybe we can or we can't do and that's what I want the council and, and that's fine I just if you're if you're trying to make a new motion on that I just would like your calendar is already getting cluttered in your in, in some of your meetings and all the motions and things we're trying to respond to we can consolidate it and have it in one address I, that, that's one what I like to do yeah. if possible Mr. Chair Councilman Carlson sorry if I could just respond to that to the second point about the vehicles parked and all that um, what I would ask, maybe Ms. Wynn, you could get someone in your staff to contact each of us to ask about the kinds of uh, code enforcement violations that we're hearing, because uh, that could give you, help you with some specific examples of how to go after those, and that would be one, and I think we strengthened that a couple years ago. To the first one, though, uh, Councilman Miranda, I think that's a separate, maybe bigger issue. I'm happy to make a separate motion, or you can make it, and, uh, but I think we, we ought to make a separate motion maybe after this that that just addresses uh things that have been built been built illegally and how do we go through how do, how do we address that um systemically to be fair to everyone uh, i know we address pieces of it later i mean earlier uh with other motions but maybe maybe we could pass this motion and then try to do a second motion on that okay we still have a motion on the floor made by councilman carlson uh, amended by Councilwoman Hertak, but still seconded by Councilman Vieira. Yes, sir. Let's have a roll call vote on that, please. Goose? Yes. Vieira? Yes. Maniscalco? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Hertak? Yes. Carlson? Yes. And C. Charles? Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Thank you. Councilman Carlson, would you like to make your motion now? Sure. And Councilman Miranda? I mean, I'm sorry, Councilman Miranda? Do you want me to start or you finish? or that Whatever you like to do. Thank you, Councilman Carlson. Please um, proceed. Just, ju I'll throw this out as, a, as an idea, and you can edit it or change it. Um, just to ha ask um, Ms. Wynn and her department to come back on, on the same day um, at the workshop in June to uh, discuss how the city can fairly and systemically 
uh, go through neighborhoods to identify uh, what structures are there illegally, um, how to address them Ill the illegal structures, and how to um, uh, work with the uh, realtor and real estate community to adequately inform uh, buyers of properties about um, the rights that property owners have on their structures. Does that cover it? That's fine. We have a motion made by Councilman Carlson, second. seconded by Councilman Maniscalco. All in favor say aye. aye. Is there any opposed? Motion carries. I would just like to make one comment that when we look at illegal building structures, that's not code enforcement, that's building services. So I just want to make sure that that's clear. Okay, should I change the motion or? Uh, just. Or construction services. Okay, should I say code enforcement and construction, construction services? services? Okay, just, I would just like to modify it to add construction okay, services. Modify the, the, the motion by Councilman Carlson, seconded by Councilman Maniscalco. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Sorry. Motion carries. Motion passes. Okay. Consent agenda items. Councilman Vieira, you have public safety. Yes, sir. Move items 15 second eight. We have a motion made by Councilman Vieira, seconded by Councilman Maniscalco. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Councilman Goods, you have Parks and Recreation. We have a motion made by Councilman Goose, seconded by Councilman Maniscalco. All in favor say aye. Aye. Is there any opposed? Motion carries. Councilwoman Hurtak, you have Public Works. I move items number 38 through 56. Second. We have a motion made by Councilwoman Hurtak, seconded by Councilman Maniscalco. All in favor say aye. Aye. Is there any opposed? Motion carries. Councilman Miranda, you have Finance. Before I go there, I believe 64 was pulled. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I move uh, 57 through 63. Second. Motion made by Councilman Miranda, seconded by Councilman Maniscalco. All in favor say aye. Aye. Is there any opposed? Motion passes. Uh, Councilman Carlson, you have building and zoning with a uh, substitute resolution on agenda item number 79. Um, I need to recuse myself on 73 and 74, so I'd like to move uh, 65 through 79, including the substitute on 79, Second. except for 30, uh, sorry, except for 73 and 74. Oh, it was pulled for discussion, yeah. okay. Okay, I'd like to move 65 through 78 uh, minus uh, 73 and 74. Second. We have a motion made by Councilman Carlson, seconded by Councilman Maniscalco. All in favor say aye. 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 Is there any opposed? Motion passes. Mr. And then Chairman. I would like to um, please uh, ask the, um, Council to receive and file my so Form 8B for 73 and 74, and just for um, uh, the public's uh, edification and the um, and any staff members who are watching and taking note, um, I want to say that my firm does not do any business with anybody related to city projects. We don't advise people on city projects. We don't we don't work uh, directly on any city projects. However, the Ethics Commission uh, asks us to. Um, to uh, when in question or any doubt whatsoever to go ahead and, and recuse ourselves because that's the ethical thing to do. It is the ethical thing to do to recuse ourselves, not to not recuse ourselves. And so recusing yourself is a good thing, not a bad thing. And so um, although my firm does not have a direct connection with, with 73 and 74, we work with a client that, that may have a related interest. And so in an abundance of caution, I'd like to recuse myself and ask the city uh, clerk to accept these uh, Form 8Bs, please. So move to accept the forms. Second. Motion made by Councilman Carlson, seconded by Councilman Maniscalco. <coughs> All in favor say aye. aye. Is there any opposed? Motion carries. Yeah, we move 73 and 74. Uh, well, I was gonna ask Councilman Vieira, That's who's fine. co-chair. That's fine. Sure. Or vice chair. We have a motion made by Councilman Vieira, seconded by Councilman Goods. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. I'd like to move items, move items 80 through 83. 84 was full for discussion. We have a motion second. made by Councilman Maniscalco, seconded by Councilman uh, Vieira. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Move to set item number 85 of uh, the public hearing for July 27, 2023 at 1.30 p.m. in City Council Chambers, third Second. Floor. Wait a we second. have a motion made by... No. Sorry. Did that bring 
resolution says 1.30 in the afternoon. I just that's caught that. I, said, yes. I know that. That's the time of the resolution. Can we hold that item, please? I, I rescind my resolution motion. Right, we'll bring it back. I want to have a discussion on that because I want to make sure we have the right times as we move forward. Thank you. I'm here for, for item number 85. Yes. What time would, because we, we were no longer doing 130 uh, hearings after, uh, as, we re, as, we, as we reordered business. Is that? Good? Well, Right. Whatever's the pleasure of council. I move to set this. I move this resolution but, to set. I, can, I I can. Okay, could we bring it back then to do that? I can. Okay. What okay. possible? You want to set it for ten thirty public hearing what? instead of one thirty? Yes, but the resolution states one thirty. No, no, I'm saying when you bring back a substitute, set it for ten thirty instead of one thirty. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Lord of water. Yes, sir. I'm, 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 I'm confused here. I don't see where it's a time certain as far as a we uh, has to be heard at one thirty. If, yeah. if we're just if we're just moving a resolution for one thirty on the twenty seven, we're just moving this resolution right now. No, sir. What this is is this is a written resolution that's in sire to set a public hearing for July twenty seventh at one thirty in the afternoon. Cannot be heard earlier than one thirty in the afternoon. Now you're doing your hearings in the morning. Your staff reports in the afternoon, so in order to not have what we have today, which is to come back because this one, that 1.30 today, is something that was set So you're saying ago. we can't move this right now until 1.30 this afternoon? No, what sir. I'm saying what so we need to do is we need to have the resolution amended to say the correct time of 10.30 a.m., and when she comes back with a substitute resolution, we can then move that resolution to set this public hearing on the 27th at, at 10.30 in the morning. We just need to change the time. That's what you check. All we have to do is change the time. That's it. That's it. All right. So Will you bring that back to us later today when we yes. come back from recess? Right. Thank you. Thank you, you very Thank much. You. It's Pettis Mackle. Thank you. All right. No, we pulled it for discussion, not yet. All right. Shall we go to staff reports with another last 20 minutes remaining? Do you know or do we want to go to lunch and then come back for staff reports? Staff report. Let's do 64. Okay, yeah. let's do six, yeah. agenda item number 64. <coughs> you all can skip to 79. I need to get Mr. Harvey down for item 64. Thank you very much. Let's go to uh, agenda item number 79, file number BZP 23-80843. Uh, Rebecca Johns, legal department. Um, I believe Councilmember Hartek had some questions. Uh, yes, I read through this again, and I just wanted um, the public to understand that we aren't changing anything about the requirements Correct. of uh, these infill phase housing phases, because uh, we as a council, when we approved it to the 140% AMI, we were very cognizant to say we wouldn't do that again. So I was just hoping that you could explain it um, just so the public can understand what is actually happening here and that it has nothing to do with us changing the affordable housing-ness of this. Sure. So this property is ready to be conveyed to a user, um, a qualified buyer from the developer. The way this program was initially set up, SHIP funds were going to be used for these properties. And therefore, when the Declaration of Affordable Covenants was placed on the property originally, the declaration included some provisions that were required under the SHIP guidelines. And because this property, SHIP funds were never actually used, the developer used their own money. Um, Fannie Mae, when the buyer, the buyer is now purchasing, Fannie Mae is providing financing, and Fannie Mae was objecting to those provisions in the declaration. And since they're not applicable to this property anyway, in order to, for the buyer to get financing, we agreed to remove these two provisions. Thank you. It's only for this particular property. Councilman Goods. Uh, Ms. Johns, thank you for your quick work 
with this um, yesterday when I received a call from the uh, from the bank personnel, um, and we were able to clear up uh, those misunderstandings very quickly. And I'm sure the buyer is very happy that we can get this so they can be able to purchase at home. But again, thank you for your due diligence right away on that. Any other questions? No. Move the resolution. So moved. We have the uh, motion by Councilman Maniscalco, seconded by Councilman Goods. All in favor say aye. Aye. Is there any opposed? Motion carries. All right, let's, we're, we're going to take up uh, agenda item number 64 and then right after that, uh, agenda item number 88. Good morning, Council. David Harvey, Legal Department. This resolution is the, um, to approve the settlement in the VASO litigation. Uh, this is the lawsuit that arose from the 2017 enactment of the city's um, ban on conversion therapy. As Council knows, this has been litigated. The District Court and the 11th Circuit Appellate Court have found the ordinance was uh, in violation of the, both the, uh, was preempted by state law and was also in violation of the Constitution. So plaintiff as the prevailing party is now entitled to attorney's fees, uh, as well as any compensatory damages. We're recommending settlement in the amount of 950,000. Any questions? Mr. Chairman. Councilman Goods. Just so the public know, Mr. Shelby, stop me if I'm going down the wrong place. Just so the public know, there was a closed session in reference to this discussion about the settlement. So for the public's knowledge, it should be public record after this, after this, after, after, after this situation, cases. after this case is missed so the public can know why council is not discussing over. We've had a private session in reference to the litigation. Right. Once the litigation is terminated, then the transcript of the closed session um, will be made public. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Councilman Carl. Stop me if you need to. But um, <clears throat> I think I was not on council yet, but it, the, the fact that council passed this showed that it was council's intent to uh, prohibit this. And then uh, the city defended this uh, city legal department, defended the city in litigation. Uh, uh, by people who opposed it, and um, and and so this is the the settlement. Uh, but settling this, um, it, I think, has no it, at least for me has no bearing on how I feel about the subject. It's just um, we have we have to follow the law and the advice of attorneys in this case. We're not settling the We're just settling the attorneys. Right, and to be clear, the case on the merits has already been decided in favor of Mr. Vazo. So this is really just a settlement of the attorney's fees and any compensatory damages that could be made. And my point really is just that it, it, it agreeing to a settlement it, uh, is not a reflection of how each of us necessarily feels about the issue. It, um, it's, it's, it's only um, approving a settlement on the vice of council thing. Councilman Vieira. Thank you. And I, I want to build on that. Thank you for saying that, Councilman Carlson. That, that is important to say. I, I was on council when we passed this, and I think it was 2017. And I remember being uh, personally uh, very touched by the people that came out and, and told personal stories from their heart. It really touched me a lot. And um, just that those people are uh, continuing to be heard and seen by the city of Tampa and by city council. Um, my uh, And I... Uh, just wanted to say that, that just in case if there's any vagueness in that regard. Thank you. Who would like to move this resolution? So moved. Second. We have a motion made by Councilman Goose, seconded by Councilman Vieira. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Let's do a roll call vote, please. Miranda? Yes. Turtek? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Goose? Yes. Vieira? Yes. Maniscalco? No. And Citro? Yes. Motion carry with Maniscalco voting no. Thank you very much. Now let's go to uh, agenda item number 88. Good morning, Council. Eric Weiss, Wastewater Department Director. Um, this item was on the March 16th agenda. Um, did a presentation and it got continued to this one because it's a tw over a $20 million project to give the two weeks in between. This is a pipes project and it's ongoing implementation of our master plan at the wastewater treatment plant. Um, and it's really one of the construction projects that does a complete rehabilitation 
uh, what we call our secondary treatment process, which is removing organics from the wastewater, also known as carbon. Um, and I'll just close with this is not a pure project. This is the master plan and it's rehabilitating our aging infrastructure. So I'm here to answer any questions you may have. Any questions, Councilman Mascotto? I know we often ask these questions regarding contracts, and this is a $77 million investment. Do you have any numbers in regards to minority participation, anything like that, sir? Yes. Um, I believe it's 22% overall it was achieved, 11% um, black business, and 10% SLBE. Thank you very much, sir. Any other comments or questions? Second. Motion to uh, move agenda item number 88, PW 23-80277 by Councilman Miranda, seconded by Councilman Maniscalco. All in favor say aye. Aye. Is there any opposed? Motion carries. Can I just say thank you? Councilman Carlson. Can I just say thank you for uh, bringing this back? Uh, the purpose of bringing it back, and we'll discuss this in staff reports later, is is just to give the public a second chance to, to look at it. And, and in this case, we didn't get any extra public input. So thank you for doing that. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Councilman Goods. Uh, Mr. Weiss, thank you for the, the EBO numbers. I mean, <coughs> 77 million, that's a, that's a lot of money. Uh, and I'm gonna be frank with you. I mean, uh, the overall, you, you, you have, was it 20% was it? Um, I don't remember, that sounds about right, I mean, overall. But, but I think for 77 million, uh, we need to increase that a little bit. 77 million, I mean, I, I, I just think that still, for that kind of money, it's still kind of low with those numbers. And I, 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 we, need to get, we need to get there. But for me, uh, again, I, I approve the project, what we're doing. I respect what we're doing. But to me, we, we've got to do just a little bit better when we're giving that kind of money away. Thank you, sir. Okay, on the March um, 16th, we also had an amendment for some design and we achieve 40 percent black business on that we appreciate it. that's appreciated sir thank you thank you thank you can we move item number uh, 89 as well oh, do we have staff to report on that agenda item number 89 file number pw 23 ah let's see mr weber mr 20 uh 23 dash 80830 mr weber Good morning, Chair and Council. Uh, this item is for a renewal of award for liquid ferric sulfate in an estimated amount of $6.5 million. It represents a 5% increase in the price for ferric sulfate. Uh, that's consistent with, with what we're seeing uh, throughout the industry. Actually, it's a little on the low side. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Mr. Weber? Move the resolution. We have a motion by Councilman Maniscalco to move the resolution of file number PW23-80830, seconded by Councilman Miranda. Any further discussion? Councilwoman Hurtak. Uh, I, I want to say thank you for, that, for mentioning the consumer price index. I also wanted to make note that in my uh, planning, um, some of the uh, other um, change orders and cha um, things that we approved earlier uh, the percentages of increases have gone down from about 8.5 percent that they're they're <coughs> asking for the increase down to about six and a half. So we are starting, and and I asked about that, and um, uh, I was told that that we are starting to see um, kind of a settling um, with inflation. So hopefully we'll continue to see the lower um, increases where we have to have increases. So I just wanted to point that out for the public and say thank you, uh, Mr. Weber, for bringing that up. Okay, all in favor say aye. Aye. Is there any opposed? Motion passes. Uh, I'd like to go to agenda item number 94, if we could. Yes, please. File number CM23-79315. have the number memorized. My apologies. So you sitting there. Hi. My name is Russell Hubbard. I'm the CTO for the city of Tampa. 
Hi. Uh, I passed a memo for your uh, for the council's consideration. We met with the members of the TVBA to discuss the uh, issues with Excella. We were able to come to uh, a reasonable conclusion that the system does work as we indicated. We have some training opportunities that are coming up in late March. We've attached that to your item in rather late April and, and throughout May. Uh, uh, from a third standpoint, f from feedback from multiple members of the council and the folks that asked us, they asked us for some direct linking from our GIS maps that cover permitting and zoning issues and, and where they're issued to deep link into the Accela uh, system directly. We have added that functionality and deployed it as of about two weeks ago. Um, we did reach out somewhat late. My apologies to the Tampa Area Business, uh, sorry, Tampa Housing, homeowners can you, Association Homeowners Association, thank you very much. Uh, um, uh, uh, JC Hutchinson and, and CSD did reach out. We are willing to have the same kind of meeting with them that we did have with, with uh, uh, our folks from uh, uh, TBBA and make sure that they're comfortable. And I think a couple of key things came out of this, folks, that, that I, I think you'll agree. Uh, next time we do an upgrade, we are going to ensure that we do these educational and promotional activities before the item goes out, and I believe that will address much of the concerns that you guys have gotten. I think when someone gets to see a change that's coming, they're much more accepting of it. Uh, secondarily, we're going to keep working with these groups as we move forward to make sure that any lingering issues are addressed. And if you can pass the word on the training sessions that we're having, in those sessions we are also going to have representatives, our technical groups, and Excella where possible to take any input that comes out as a, as a byproduct of the training. Uh, and that concludes my report for you. If I have any questions, if I can help you. Councilwoman Hurtak. Um, I want to say thank you so much for uh, being able to reach out um, to both the Tampa Bay Builders Association and kind of solve that. Uh, and then um, at, uh, you know, right before this, trying to have a meeting with Than. Uh, and I, I did see that you have some um, training sessions coming up. My, my only concern is that they're 1130 in the morning. And a lot of people who use this system are volunteers that work for, with their neighborhoods mm -hmm. and would need something after working hours. So I was. I hope that you're able to uh, provide some of these trainings in the future in the mm -hmm. evening. Okay. We're hoping to do two things, additional sessions, and we'll talk with the members from CSD about that. Uh, secondarily, we're hoping to record some of the sessions and make them available online for folks who can't make them, and I think that also will help a bunch of folks that, that need to. And then I, I guess I want to point out, any individuals that have an issue, uh, in, in my knowledge, have never been turned away from construction services if they call up individually and ask for some help navigating an issue. So, so that is also open to folks, uh, and, and we can also take that area for support. But your recommendations are noted, and we will do that. Uh, and then additionally, um, I would like to motion to have this come back on May 18th, just to sort of tie it with a bow to make yes, sure that we've um, talked to Than and what other, whatever el other things that you might be able to get from them and bring it back and kind of have a, a true resolution. Yes, ma'am. Happy to do okay. so. Okay. So that's my motion is Second. to bring this back May 18th um, under staff reports. We have a motion made by Councilwoman Hurtak, seconded by Councilman uh, Maniscalco. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Councilman Maniscalco. My questions were answered. I just want to say thank you for doing a great job. You covered all the bases, and thank you for taking into consideration other comments so we can try to, to accommodate everybody because we have a lot of uh, individuals that contact us regarding Acela and the difficulties and the struggles and not understanding, especially when you're updating and changing, but mm -hmm. you have it covered, and I appreciate you very much. Thank, thank you, sir. That's true. Councilman Carlson. Um, item number 90, Ms. Wynn is here, and I think it would go fast if you want to do it. Let's go, uh, what did you say, Councilman Carlson? Then we'll go back to 90. 80. I'm, I'm sorry, did we, let's go 84, and then we'll go to uh, what you requested. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'll start the discussion if you want. Go ahead. All right, we have Ms. Duncan, but real quick, 
you know, the reason I pulled this was, and, um, and we've all heard many complaints from the general public regarding the Seminole Heights project uh, with Nelson. And uh, having this item come up, regardless of what it is, I know it's only $105,000, but regardless, in the, in the larger scope, um, you know, Nelson has had quite a few delays, and we've received an unbelievable amount of complaints from individuals in the neighborhood. Um, and with this, uh, their concern is, how is it that we're approving more contracts for this construction company when there's so many delays already? For example, a uh, street, Caracas, east of the interstate, was supposed to be paved already this week, and there's a delay that it's going to be paved on Monday. Hopefully they fulfill that promise because I'm in communication with the neighborhood daily. Uh, there's always at least one person. Uh, usually many people with concerns and uh, the concern this time even though this is a smaller project in the larger scope of things um, we're giving more projects to a company that has been experiencing so many delays people I think with their frustration say let them finish one project first and then we can look at other things but I'm just uh, trying to be responsive to the community that's reached out regarding this and that's why I pulled it for discussion Councilwoman Hurtak. Um, my understanding from, uh, and I don't disagree, people have had a lot of complaints, but my understanding is this is the f f um, finishing of a project that was started ages ago. Um, and I'm sure Ms. Duncan will talk about that. Uh, but this is not to continue a project, but to finish it. Ms. Duncan. Yes, good afternoon, uh, Council. I appreciate the opportunity to clarify some questions about this item. Uh, this contract was actually for a separate project, uh, a bike lane and sidewalk project on Columbus Drive between Nebraska and 14th Street. It was actually com essentially completed last June. Uh, there was some final change order punch list items that we have been working with the contractor on Delay, some delays related to the supply chain issues uh, with our sanitary sewer manholes. So we've finally completed those finishing touches on our punch list. And this is a closing out of that contract uh, for the amount that you see there, um, which again, is a separate project from the Southeast Seminole Heights project. So it's, it's basically done. And this is closing out the contract uh, completely now. Councilwoman Herjack. Uh, can you explain to us and the public what the additional money is for? Why there's an extension necessary? Why do we? Why? Why are we having to pay more money? Uh, there was not a, really an extension. It's just a, um, you know, continuation of the contract to complete the work. Um, the additional. Um, Monies are for punch list items, uh, for additional asphalt paving overruns, and issue, issues that came up with the sanitary manhole remediation that were not anticipated. Those are field occurrences that were not in the original contract. Uh, the, the, there was a delay with the uh, procurement of those manholes. Some of these things have a long lead time. So those uh, components have been received, uh, constructed, the contract administration has signed off on the completion of the project, and this is closing out the the final work. Thank you. Move the resolution. We have a motion made by Councilman Maniscalco, seconded by Councilman Goods. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Is there any opposed? <laughs> motion passes. Council, I believe it's twelve o'clock. Can we do ninety real quick? Okay, let's do ninety real quick. Okay, it doesn't yeah. matter. All right, then we'll wait till okay. after. Thank you. Motion Thank you for adjourning to, um, to 1.30. I'm, I'm not adjourned. Excuse me. Recess, Recess till 1.30. <laughs>